still got the same on my neck.
Two sides of the Milky Way Somehow we got you
have me thinking they're friends. Ten toes down, I'll be free to the end. Crib outside the city, I don't feel safe in my hands. Took so many years, I'm just waiting for the wins. I'm in debt to no one but the one who took my sins. I do it for real, there's no reason to pretend. If I do it once, I do it again. Add it up. Everything is on me, gon' back it up. Matter what? Told you I'ma do me. Why you hating on me? It's not adding up. I do roll like a Mack truck. Country heart, I'ma cop a farm and go act up. Lot of scars, I was cold hearted, now I'm back up. Keep it real, I do this once a month. I don't rap much. I just take the money and go stack up. Only buying car, heart, car, car, to get tatted up. All that other bull, it don't matter much. You only climb me, I put the ladders up. No fault. I done doubled up on the workload. I think I fell in love with the bankroll. Pray up, get money, then we lay low. Then we lay low. Add it up, add it up. Bankroll, bankroll. Euro, euro. Peso, peso. Add it up, add it up. I'm just doing me. Everything is on me. Oh, you matter what? Add it up, add it up. Bankroll, bankroll. Euro, euro. Peso, peso. Add it up. I'm just doing me. Everything is on me. Oh, you matter what? Add it up. Told her if it's all me. Everything is on me, gon' back it up. Matter what? Told you I'ma do me. Why you hating on me? It's not adding up. Add it up. Told her if it's all me, everything is on me, gon' back it up. Matter what? Told you I'ma do me. Why you hating on me? It's not adding up.
promise that would wait for you but i'm getting so impatient tell me that you're ready now this room is big enough for two and i want to do that something something that will blow your mind do you know the things you do to me touch me and i'll make you understand With you, let me take you under where nobody can see. I just wanna dance, dance, dance with you. Hard as in the summer, so put your hands on me.
I'm running, running, running out of patience There's gotta be somebody who can save me Gotta be someone who feels the same uh -huh. Cause I've been all by myself Got nobody else to help ease my mind I feel so lonely, so goddamn lonely Can't be the only, the only one No, I can't be the
I can make you stay Cause baby I love you Why you tryna break us up When I'm tryna build it up I wish I could make you stop Cause baby I love you Guess I'm gonna dance alone tonight I'm gonna miss your body You know I can never get it right Without you, no I don't wanna step into the light If I don't get you shoddy
So here we go for the senior Rotax uh, time qualify session on the YouTube live stream. I made a big boo boo and uh, got to unmute the microphone. Professional streamer right here, but welcome. So anybody who is watching the YouTube live stream, once again, if you uh, have been wondering why there's been nothing on the commentary side of things, that is because I decided to have the microphone slider on the software all the way down to mute. So I have been commentating. I just made a big boo-boo and made it exclusive to Clay Pigeon Raceway and here we're up at the circuit. <laughs> there we go. Uh, but welcome everyone. If you are here and can hear me, please say something into the uh, YouTube chat. Uh, then I know why nothing was said in the chat earlier. <laughs> so let's go for the Senior Road Tax Qualifying Session as I actually have audio on my microphone on the YouTube live stream. So, apologise if uh, anybody does re watch this back and realise there's just music. But anyway, let's get into uh, the live uh, times for all of the drivers out there for this one. Our top three at the moment Callum Davies, Cameron Crockett, and Brandon Hay. Uh, 34 39, 34 40, and uh, what was a time but it's now a 3417 by the uh, fastest driver out there at the man uh, at the moment uh, Brandon Hay so we are live over on YouTube with commentary this time <laughs> I'm gonna say it like that because I uh, forgetting to do a few bits on the YouTube live stream which is a bit of a mistake on my half but there we are you all make mistakes So, Brandon Haig, 34.09, fastest lap time, uh, cart number 20. Uh, ben Page in cart number 90, second fastest at the moment. Uh, Callum Davies in the top three, 35.35, over two minutes to go. With commentary on my microphone, hopefully, please, thank you. <laughs> I can see the bar moving now on the uh, bottom of the screen. Oh god. I'll watch this back, I'll be like, what an idiot. So, just under two minutes to go. Uh, Brandon Haig still at the top. I'll play 409 as fast as lap time. Cameron Crockett just sneaking into the top three. Ben Page in the top three at the moment as well. Jack Goring just out the side in fourth with a 34-3-0. Uh, he did that on his uh, previous lap there. As uh, we keep climbing through the order. Brandon Hague in the pits. 
So it finally notifies on the timing screen. So that first spot is at the moment. Well, Brandon Hake thinks that is locked out for now. Let's see if that changes. Uh, Dan Burt's in the pit after a lap. Uh, so hopefully if that is a problem, it can be sorted ASAP as soon as possible. Cameron Crockett still in the top three. Ben Page in the top three. Cameron Davies making the top four. Jack Goran's in the pits. Uh, unable to continue. Hopefully we'll be able to sort that out later. Ben Fichetti in the top ten. 34, 7, 8. Any really sensing? Ten seconds left on the clock. Not a lot of time left to uh, go ahead. Thank you, Tim, on the YouTube live stream. Spread, see you back again. Uh, sorry for the total silence of music uh, <laughs> at the start of this live stream. <laughs> Made a bit of a boo boo. So qualifying has ended for the senior road tech. Six minutes. So Brandon Hay does secure that top spot uh, with a 34-2-3, only doing six laps. Cameron Crockett uh, will take second. Uh, ben Page rounds out the top three and then Callum Davies will be on that second row as well in fourth. 34-7-2. So for those who are at home, uh, we'll just run over the race order for today. We have seen uh, a couple of these already. We had the three lap practice and some of the uh, some of the stuff. But there's a running order for yourselves: Honda Cadets, Mini Max, and Junior Rotex. That is the first three classes. Uh, Junior Blues and the 177 and 177 Masters. And then it's the Senior Rotex. And then what's coming out onto track now, which is the Senior Blues for their qualifying session. Uh, so there's the uh, race links here for you uh, for all the classes out there. Uh, so we got for this one uh, time qualifying which you have missed which was six minutes long feel free to watch those back uh, by rewinding the YouTube live stream uh, the heats which will be next the eight minutes plus a lap uh, and then we've got the pre-final which is nine minutes plus a lap once again uh, so the time is creeping up just a little bit and then we have after that the grand final uh, which will be 12 minutes plus a lap so there we go. There's just your little reclap, uh, reclap, recap for yourself. Whilst we go for all of that. So here we go. Senior Blue qualifying. Just whilst I notify everybody on the YouTube live stream, uh, what the order for today with the new graphic overlays. Let's get into what we have from the Senior Blues. Only ten of them. Tom Parker at the top at the moment, 38-3-7, Anthony Cleal uh, in the top three, uh, in second at the moment, and then Paul Alexander as they come around on the flyby cam. They go over the start finish. Well, uh, let's go to multicam, get the flyby, and then the other two cameras. So Anthony Cleal at the fastest at the moment, cart number one in that top spot at the moment. The spin coming out of the exit of the S's by... Uh, the number 64, I believe that is. Uh, Alex Kemp, which is one of the novices out there. Uh, back to the top three, though. Michael Bell and Tom Parker uh, at the moment. 36.19 is uh, by Anthony Cleal, so we'll see if that will get any closer. Sylvia Investigator getting into that top three, 36-6-2, just not close enough to Anthony Cleo, Michael Bell coming back into that top three once again. Steve Groves in the top six, cart number 19, 36-9-7, personal best in this qualifying session at the moment. Uh, we're just dipping under the four minute mark uh, in this qualifying session. It's a bit different to have time qualifying.
Anthony Cleo going faster, 36.04, so nearly getting into the 35s. Michael Bell still hanging on to that second at the moment. But he'll be able to find those extra few tenths at the moment. He hasn't uh, gone faster, he's actually gone the opposite, gone a bit slower. Uh, Robin Solid Stones at the back at the moment, 37.88. Part number 65. Phil Shears, cart 8 in 8. Paul Alexander, cart 5th in 5th. Cart 5 and 5th, there we go. Yeah, cart 5th, that's a great cart number, isn't it? Michael Bell in the top 3, and Tom Parker in the top 3 as well. Anthony Cleal nearly in the 35s, 3601. Near in the 2.5 minute mark remaining on the, this timed qualifying session for day one of the Wessex Challenge. Paul Alexander making a faster lap, getting into that second row. Michael Bell in third, that car three. And uh, Anthony Cleo putting that number one car into first. Uh, will he be able to get into the 35s? He's uh, got under two minutes left on this clock to uh, achieve that one. So plenty of time, plenty of time. Here we go, it's a bit cooler up here at the circuit. You can feel it. Coming into the commentary booth, it's more than welcome. Then you have cold weather. So we don't all overheat. Anthony Cleo. Still not being able to improve his lap time at the moment. I think that 36.01 was that a push. Uh, Tom Parker still in that second. I think everyone's just slowing up a little bit. Only a couple of drivers being able to go slightly faster. To go through the S's by one of the drivers there. It's uh, quite dark on that live on that camera. Let's go back to flyby cam. And uh, Tom Parker still staying where they are, quite a lot of these drivers staying where they are in the order at the moment. So they go into Billy's and the yeses, uh, all still to change on these. Uh, this one is the last qualifying session, so uh, still a lot to go for yet, so then we'll get to our first heats that uh, the YouTube live stream will be able to hear. Back again on flyaway camera, Anthony Cleo not going faster. I think we have our lineup at the moment. Top four is Anthony Cleo, Tom Parker, Michael Bell, and Paul Alexander. Cards 1, 15, 3, and 5. Will anybody be able to go faster in their last couple of laps? And one does, it's Michael Bell. 36, 2, 3. Someone responded, six seconds left. We're gonna get the check of flag out on the next driver so this is it last push for everyone Anthony Cleo is still at the top Tom Parker stays where he is in that third position spot Paul Alexander stays in that fourth position spot at the moment a couple more drivers coming through Michael Bell stays there but Sylvia Investor stays there as well Steve Groves is in the pits Chris Lord not being able to improve either Robin Stoddart Stones Stays and everybody else stays. Alex Kemp coming over and at the back in that tenth position. So top four, Anthony Cleal. We start alongside uh, Michael Bell on that top uh, on that front row. Tom Parker and Paul Alexander will be taking that second row uh, for those ones. Fastest lap time of a 36:01. So not into not into the 35s. Uh, but very close to that indeed. Right, that is the end of all of the timed qualifying sessions here. It's time to get into the heat, which is up very, very shortly. Just waiting for one driver to uh, go off the track. I think it's fun. Uh, just at the exit, but hey everybody on the YouTube live stream, if you are watching, uh, you can hear me say the thing. And if you are supporting anyone, feel free to let me know and I'll pop it out on the YouTube live stream 
for you as we go along. Music from Epidemic Sound. I might stand up for this one. I'll move back to the chair of doom. So we just got a little bit of a wait before the heat, uh, but if you haven't done so already, feel free to pop uh, your mouse button or to your fingers to that subscribe button, hit that like button for us uh, if you haven't done so yet today, and uh, make sure you're subscribed. And uh, be notified for when we go live tomorrow, because uh, uh, we've got a busy day once again tomorrow. So hopefully we'll be able to get and the way in a few moments time.
You can do better. Let me show you what a good time looks like. You can do better. You can do better. Let me show you what a good time looks like. You can do better. I dare you to be wild.
So a little bit of a short break there, but we're back underway with the first heat of the day. Let's get this going. Ten Honda Cadets to fly out onto the track and give us some exciting racing, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see what we get from all ten of these drivers out here on the circuit. Who's going to be able to uh, win the heat, get ahead, and all the other bits. Let's get underway for the first heat of the day. As we go towards the top bend for the start of this one. Ladies and gentlemen, coming down the main straight now. Flyby cam at the ready. Let's get ready for the Honda Cadets heat as they're going into Billy's. All of them managing to stay out there on the tarmac through the S's and down the back straight. As they go into the hairpin next, who's going to be out on top on this one? Through the hairpin towards the horseshoe. Around the horseshoe we go. It's that number 30, Alice Fairclough, starting on the second row. As they come around the top bend and down the main straight, let's give you your order. Let's get the flyby cam on the YouTube live stream. So it's Alice Fairclough followed by Bella Fairclough. They just swap positions going into Billy's. Jada Mead is in third with Marley Fisher up into fourth. Uh, all changing at the S's as it gets all very close between two of the drivers there. As we're going three ride just before the entrance. One into the tire wall there as well. Sees that run a bit too wide and off onto the grass. It is the two Fairclough sisters, Alice and Bella, in reverse order. So Bella Fairclough ahead of Alice there. Going into the top bend and down the main straight as we go in for our next lap of this race. Fastest lap time at 41.53 set by Bella Fairclough there in that first position. Max levels down. Uh, in that third position, making up a few positions, uh, Ava Morris in fourth. As they go into the hairpin and head towards the horseshoe, it's the 29 of Jaden Mead who unfortunately uh, went into that tire wall earlier. Once again for the top bend as we come down the main straight. Uh, the nine cadets in a row. So I'm flying around. 40.93 by Ava Morris as they catch on up. As we go through the S's, Max Lovell catching on the back end of Alice Fairclough. Ava Morris doing the same to Max Lovell as we go around the hairpin and towards the horseshoe. Uh, Jaden Mead there just going over the line. As we go through buttons and towards the top bend, Bella Fairclough having a bit of a lead on her sister. So through the top bend down the main straight. Once again, Max Lovell has Ava Morris on the outside looking for an overtake. So we go into Billy's. Ava down the inside and also getting Alice in the process. So we go through the S's. Alice pushed over the curbs and back down the back straight. Once again, through the hairpin and towards the horseshoe once more. Bella Fairclough still with a bit of a lead. On that number 32 of Ava Morris. She's made it up a few positions so far. So let's go to the top bend and down the main straight for another lap of this race. Better Fairclough followed by Ava Morris and Max Lovell followed by Alice Fairclough still in the top four. Marley Fisher in fifth, Jensen Walker in sixth position. Top six. Relatively close and separated from the rest of the grid at the moment. Um, we've got third, fourth, fifth and sixth in a little pack. And meanwhile, Better and Ava Morris, uh, Better Fairclough and Ava Morris have a uh, the two that are close together. Let's give you the updated order on the YouTube live stream. So we go to the top bend and down the main straight. Yet again, dips under four minutes left on this heat. Go 
to go through but he's Eva Morris right on the back end of better Fairclough. Eva Morris with another fast lap time of a 40.7 as Fairclough going around the outside of the number 97 of Max Lovell who went in a bit too deep into the S's round the hairpin and towards the horseshoe at the moment it is a semi-fairclough uh, semi sandwich at the moment top bend now Bella and Ava both together coming down the main straight to get back on the flyby cam on the YouTube live stream those two are close together Alice Fairclough leading the other pack uh, meanwhile Bella is still slightly ahead The fair club doing their personal best out there with a 40.88 to that previous lap. Going around the horseshoe. Ava Morris taking a bit of a slightly wider line. Putting her back just a little bit. Spin there from the number 22. Chilling in sixth position. Jensen Walker there. Coming back for the flyby cam as we will see the two girls of uh, Bella Fairclough and Ava Morris. Just hanging in together. Alice Fairclough still leading at the third to fifth train. Through the S's they go. Meanwhile, over back to the hairpin. Uh, we have Bella and Ava Morris still towing along with each other. Matt's level trying to creep up as well to Alice Fairclough. Marty Fisher just hanging in behind as well. Let's go to the multicam on the YouTube live stream for a couple of laps. 63 followed by the 32. Still, there's no changes from the two drivers. Alice Fairclough still slightly ahead of Max Lovell at the moment. A minute 40 left on the clock. Now it's going a bit wider going into the entrance of the S's. Uh, Tried to give Max Lovell a bit of a uh, look into there, but has uh, allowed Marty Fisher to catch up. And uh, is right on the tail end, so a uh, decent move there from Alice Fairclough. A bit of defence. Jay to me still chilling at the back at the moment. As we come down the main straight for our leading two at the moment, Better Fairclough and Ava Morris still together. Coming into Billy's. Alice Fairclough on the inside. Max Lovell doing the switcheroo. And as it managed to creep up into that third position slot, Alice is now in the middle of that pack of three going down the back straight. Bella Fairclough still ahead of Ava Morris at the moment around the horseshoe and through buttons. And towards the top bend, Alice Fairclough trying to best stay on the back end of max level. We're going now closer to 30 seconds left of this heat. Down the main straight we come. Flyby cam for the two drivers of Bella Fairclough and Ava Morris. Ava Morris positioning a cart to try and find some gaps to try and take that first spot. Down the back straight those two go. Meanwhile, the pack of three, Alice Fairclough down the inside of Max Lovell in the entrance of the S's. And uh, sneaking back up into that third position slot once more as we go down for the hairpin towards the horseshoe. Around we go through buttons. Alice Fairclough still ahead at the moment. And uh, we'll be leading two down the main straight once again. We'll be going for the last lap of this heat. Better Fairclough still ahead of Ava Morris. And uh, Alice Fairclough still ahead of Max Lovell at the moment. This is the last lap to do something. What are we going to get from these drivers going down the back straight? Better Fairclough still ahead. of Ava Morris going into the hairpin now for Alice Fairclough, her sister. Horseshoe. And three buttons, just a couple more corners for those two drivers, but coming down the main straight and winning this one, it's going to be Bella Fairclough, followed by, very closely followed by uh, Ava Morris and Alice Fairclough will be taking third position for this seat. Max Lovell slightly behind her. Marley Fisher 
in fifth. Conrad Barton, sixth. Charlie White in seventh. Luke Miguel will be taking eighth. Jensen Walker in ninth. And then Jaden Mead just coming down the main straight now to take that tenth position. So, top three a Fairclough Sisters sandwich. Bella Fairclough, followed by Ava Morris, then Alice Fairclough. So there we go, that is the Honda Cadet Heat for day one of the Wessex Challenge. We will see them a bit later on whilst we go through the rest of today's action here at Clay Pigeon Raceway. Is it going to be another dominant day for Benna Fairclough? If anybody remembers last round, she had a very dominant race day. She was first in everything, and that's not a joke. <laughs> so, good luck to her. Speak to the family yesterday just before I left work. Very lovely family. And uh, wish them all the best for today. Fast lap time went to Ava Morris with a 40.7. Uh, she was right behind Better Fairclough the whole entire of that race, but uh, like I said earlier, it is a Fairclough sister sandwich for Heat. Uh, one of one. Alice with a very strong return this, uh, this month. Uh, they were practicing yesterday. Trying to get as much, much track time as they could. Still a lovely day here at the circuit, a bit of light cloud. You're gonna get that on a beautiful day like this. The temperature is soaring a bit, because it is warm up here. Um, I do have windows open, but that's the best it's gonna be. So hopefully the rest of the action will be back very soon. So as we hear some engines roaring back onto the track, it's time to get the Minimax heat underway once more. Let's see what we're going to get from the Minimaxes. 15 drivers in total. Who is going to take the top three slots today? As they all get slowed down as they make their way towards the hairpin and horseshoe. Let's get ready for the Minimax heat. One of one. So as they hopefully will get all bunched up together coming up to the top bend, quite a lot of the pack a bit out of sync. Uh, I feel like we're going to be going again already. And uh, we are indeed going to get a full start on this one. They're way too eager getting ready today. 
as the uh, false start flags are popped onto the circuit. As uh, one driver does try and get back to go again. Hopefully it'll be slowed down, ready to go for a second time lucky. So let's go towards the top bend. They are absolutely speeding along there, eager to get going. Will we go again? We shall find out shortly. So they tried to get slowed down coming down the main straight. And we are a go for heat. Well, for the heat of uh, today. So coming through the S's and down the back straight. Number 92 ahead, that is Jack West. So around the horseshoe we go. Number 92 followed by 45, then 19. Jack West, Joshua Wickham and uh, Lucas Howe. Top bend and down the main straight we come. Let's get the flyby cam ready to go as we go flying past the camera. Jack West followed by Joshua Wickham. Then Lucas Howe, that is your top three, but it's three wide just before the S's. Lucas Howe making a very brave move going into the S's and uh, sneaks from third to first, uh, but it's already a threat as we go into the horseshoe, uh, hairpin even, and uh, towards the horseshoe. The top five drivers very eager to get swapping places, the top five together. So we go through buttons and towards the top bend. Let's get a changeover of uh, these drivers once more. So coming down the main straight, couple down the inside of one another, flyby cam at the ready. Look at that, it's a great camera angle. Joshua Wickham followed by Lucas Howell, then Jack West and Kai V, and then Harry Cottrell. That's your top five there. The five going into the S's now. The rest of the pack are a little bit close together as a uh, nice move down the inside once again. Uh, cut number 88, Frank Ward, one of the novices out there today. So we go through the hairpin for our top five. The top two slipping away from the rest. Uh, Lucas Howell with a Nice move down the inside to uh, overtake the current leader that was uh, Joshua Whitcomb uh, at that time. Uh, so top bend and down the main straight once again. Let's go for another changeover. Flying past the camera once again. That top five constantly changing as it looks like it might happen again. Lucas Howe, uh, 36.85 is the fastest lap time from him as they go down the back straight. Joshua Withcombe trying to stay behind. Uh, Jack West trying to defend off uh, fourth and fifth there behind him. Uh, Kai V and Harry Cottrell, the other two drivers trying their best there to uh, try and overtake a very defensive Jack West going into the top bend. This heat has already heated up. <laughs> Puns. Coming down the main straight then, Lucas Howe still ahead of Joshua Withcombe. As we go around again through towards the S's and through those S's, a little bit of a snap there from the number 45 as he went through uh, the S's using that curb as best he can to get as much traction to continue on. Around the horseshoe towards Buttons, the number 75 catching up to the 92 of Jack West. Zach Turner down at the bottom there, just going over the line. So down the main straight we go once more. Lucas Howe still ahead of Joshua Withcomb. Let's get the rest of the other charging drivers around on the flyby camera. Feel free to screenshot if you want to screenshot yourself going by. Uh, yellow flags down at uh, Billy's. One of the drivers just a bit slow there, not sure what the uh, problem was there. Number 42 I think that was. You won't get caught up on numbers. And the 99 has a bit of an exhaust issue as he's uh, shortcutted and is unfortunately out of this race. Zach Turner there. But back into the action. Lucas Howe still ahead of the pack. Uh, he does have the top, four, uh, the top, well, the rest of the uh, drivers behind him, the uh, second, third, and fourth. Uh, right behind him, Jack West getting up into second there. Uh, just having a look there. Let's uh, just give you multicam for a little while whilst uh, we're. Uh, Halfway there, as I nearly uh, missed what word I need to use. So going towards the top bend, 
uh, on the top right of the bottom right uh, camera <laughs> angle. That's uh, not going to get complicated at all at any point. As uh, Lucas Howe has a bit of a lead on Jack West, Joshua Withcom and Kai V, uh, and then Harry Cottrell uh, in fifth position. Has a little bit of a gap to that top four. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to catch up once again. That top four's not really changing too much. So we go back to the normal view to give you the running order as well. Uh, top bend, Lucas Howell does seem to get away at that point a little bit. As uh, we go down the main straight once more, let's get a flyby from these uh, five drivers here. As uh, we go around Billy's and towards the S's, Jack West does gain a little bit of time at the uh, at these two stages by the looks of it, uh, very visually anyway. Uh, Joshua Withcomb and Kai V both together, nearly a move down the inside there for uh, Jack West there. Looks like he got hung up on the curb a little bit too much, using too much curb. That slowed him right down, nearly three wide going into buttons. That's very brave. Top bend and down the main straight, Lucas Howe now has a bit more of a bigger gap as we go back for the flyby cam uh, just at the start finish. And uh, second to four, uh, sorry, second to fifth now altogether. Uh, just under two and a half minutes, moving to the two minutes 20 mark as uh, that uh, second place train continues down the back straight. Uh, meanwhile, Jarek Metz in seventh. Uh, we have Danny Newman Duman in 10th, Ethan Carney in 11th, uh, Frank Ward in 13th, and uh, unfortunately only losing one driver so far today uh, in this heat. So down the main straight for the next lap of this race, Lucas Howell still ahead at the moment. Jack West in second still, Joshua Withcomb still in third, question mark maybe as we go into the S's, there was a potential move made uh, by the 45 and 92. Um, 45 is ahead. Mechanical flag given to Frank Ward down in 30th position. The number 88 is a uh, back bumper. Is uh, unfortunately uh, having a scrape along the track. Uh, so very unfortunate for that driver that was hanging in that 13th position. So down the main straight once more, flying by on the flyby cam. That's great to see each time. Joshua Withcomb has gone up a position that lap. Uh, with Jack West down into third now as we are reaching the one minute mark down the back straight the 45 followed by 92 then 75 and 49 for that train of two uh, that second train second place train there we go Lucas Howell is ahead by 1.17 seconds so that gap is uh, there so down the main straight again Unchanged for the top five at the moment. Through the S's, down the back straight. Are we going to see anything changing from these five drivers in contention for the uh, top spots? As we go through the horseshoe and towards buttons. 16 seconds left to go as we go to the top bend. Are we going to squeeze out an additional lap in this race? Let's go to the flyby camera on the YouTube live stream. And we are just about with seven seconds remaining. So we're going to squeeze out another additional lap. That gives the opportunity for those in third, fourth and fifth to potentially try and attack and make a chance. Going into the hairpin, no movement there at the moment through towards the horseshoe. The gap is closing behind Lucas Howell at the moment. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get ready for the last lap of this race. It is out on the bottom left of your screens. Let's get ready for this last lap of this heat for the Minimax. These top five separated by eight seconds a piece so let's see how he goes as we go towards the horseshoe next through to buttons and towards the top bend are we going to get any changes from this third and fourth it's looking close between those two uh, but here we go down the main straight minimax heat and your checker flag goes out to 
Lucas Howell followed by Joshua Whitcomb, then Jack West. Kai V will take fourth and Harry Cottrell will take fifth. It was unchanged for a few laps and these two, uh, five drivers doing the best they can. 35.52 fast as that time by Kai V, uh, which is a very well done to himself. As the, the top 10 have gone all over the line, it's all on your screens ready if you do want to see that one. But there we go, that is the end of the heat here for the Minimaxes. Losing, unfortunately, two drivers there. So hopefully you'll be able to see them back again. Ready for the next one. As uh, we wait for one to be recovered. Powered by Oasis today, ladies and gentlemen. As you all know, I proudly tell you what my drink is. <laughs> oh, and it's heating up in here. What day it has been so far. So, oh, put the other microphone on. So here we go, ladies and gents. The other bigger grid uh, out today it is the Junior Road Tax Heat. Let's see what we're going to get from these 20 drivers. So one of the bigger grids is going to be a lot of action through this one. Let's get ready for their heat very shortly. Don't know why I said it like that. All the drivers there on your screens, the E plate out there as well. So is this one going to be first time? Let's go for the top bend. Down the main straight we go. Let's get this heat well and truly underway. Here at Clay Pigeon, is everybody going to make it around the first corner? And they do indeed. They're going to make it around the S's though. That's the second question. And they do indeed. The number 71 out ahead by the looks of it. The E-plate losing quite a few positions at the start there. Uh, so not the greatest start that he would have wanted. Around the horseshoe. Relatively all together. 21 on the outside of the pack at the moment. Towards the top bend and down the main straight we go for lap two of this race. Let's get your order for you all as uh, so many drivers go round. Woo. Leo Purge is out ahead, followed by Harry Maynard, then Charles Green, then Benjamin Bartlett, and then the E plate of Reza, who's in just a position that lap uh, at the end, so not too bad. Uh, hopefully, we'll see him climb up a few positions. We'll never know. We'll find out. Uh, but the approach is fast lap time of 37.09. It's still all to play for yet. We've still got loads of laps and loads of minutes left on the clock. So coming down the main straight once again. Let's get the fly by cam for 20 drives. It's going to look amazing. That is a good... Oh, I think that camera angle's staying. 
Three of the S's down the back straight. Uh, the number 77 starting to climb closer to that 93 as uh, we go around the hairpin and the horseshoe. Uh, there is no separation at all. There's not hardly any gaps around these 20 drivers, which is absolutely amazing to see. Let's go for the multicam view and let's uh, get a three camera aspect and what's going on. We have lost one driver, Jamie Burt, as we go down past the kink towards Billy. So number 71 ahead. The plate of Reza Seawoodham uh, is doing a 34.88, uh, fastest out there at the current time. So uh, trying to charge back to that top four that are ahead of him as they go around the hairpin towards the horseshoe. We're going to see any other switches at the horseshoe as I keep my eyes around that area. We do not. Uh, all these drivers claiming that Max with sport tyres as best they can. Coming down the main straight for the flyby camera once again. Uh, Leo Perch is ahead by under half a ten. Uh, half a second. There we go. Going through. Number 44 right behind the number 77 as he goes down the inside going into the hairpin. Claiming that the third spot. And uh, also putting his hands up. <laughs> I don't know if that's a sorry or a thank you on that one. If it is a thank you, that's cheeky. So, top bend and down the main straight. Let's see if we've got any other d driver changes that we've uh, have not spotted. As uh, spotting 19 drivers on the track. So, uh, a lot for me. Also, Benjamin Bartlett up in position on that number 77. As we go through the S's and down the back straight, the top seven are sort of now uh, close together. I'm going to say it's more the top six than anything. And down the inside goes again the same driver from last time. At number 44, just making up a few positions as best as he can. Number 77, at threat from the E plate. But the E plate's also at threat by another driver. Let's go back down top bend, down the main straight. Leo Purchase has that very charging 44 behind him. Benjamin Bartlett's on fire at the moment. Not quite literally, and a little hiccup there from one of the drivers into the tie wall. Managed to keep going though. That's put him right out of the race where he was, let's see what driver that was very quickly. And he's a push already right back to the back. Number 61, Daniel Tribe in six. Didn't catch what happened to him. Not sure if he got a call out there. Another driver change swap over there. Going into the through buttons. Contact warning given to Daniel Tribe. Um, don't think that's gonna really matter down <laughs> where he is now. Uh, so, car 71 followed by 44, the 93, Leo purchase Benjamin Bartlett, and no it's not, it's changing over, the number 44 making another move once again, is it going to stick out as they go through towards the horseshoe and towards buttons, three and a half minutes to go, back to the multicam on the YouTube live stream. So down the main straight we go, and uh, the number 44 happy with what he's done so far. Leo Purchase still staying behind, darts down the inside at the entrance of Billy's. Doesn't stick it though, back down the inside goes the 44. Third place looking as well, the 83 having a go, and the number 77, Charles Green, gonna try and get in this change, constant changing as well. Leo Purchase down into third now as uh, on the exit of the hairpin, the 83, the 93, sorry, there we go. Uh, managing to sneak up ahead as a uh, couple of pigeons go over the track. Yeah, that's all right. A, a commentary about pigeons. So, Billy's just out of contention for now, just whilst the uh, tire wall is being sorted. Uh, so, through the S's and uh, down the back of straight. 44 with a bit of a gap on the 93 of Harry Maynard. Uh, Sol Kornberg lost a couple of positions. Alexander Seller and Arthur Thacker making up the, uh, those two positions. Two minutes, 17 on the clock. Coming down at the main straight now. Still unchanged from these drivers. Get a bit of a flyby. Through the S's. And down the back straight. The top five are together now. And uh, the E-plate stuck behind the 74 of Alfie Davies. And uh, it's not been a very fast pace in the race from the E-plate today Reza uh, so far so we'll see if it changes a bit later on 
So coming down the top, uh, down the top bend, up the top bend, and down the main straight. Back for another flyby. Minute and a half, just coming onto the clock now. Alfie Davies making up a position on the E-plate, like I said. So, Reza starting starting in fourth and they're down to seventh, unfortunately. But, uh, hopefully this will be all sorted next time he's popped out onto the track. Uh, as we go around the horseshoe for our leader, the number 44 of Benjamin Bartlett. Uh, fastest lap goes to Finn Smith in the number 19. about Finn Smith, he looked for a move there going through Billy's and towards the S's. He's looking at that E-plate of uh, Reza S. So let's see what we get. 32 seconds left on the clock. I think there's going to be the uh, last few laps of this race now. So going down the start finish. New view to uh, enjoy. I like the, I like that that camera angle. It's pretty nice. Through the S is down the back straight. The number 44 still ahead of the 93, but he is catching as we go into the hairpin towards the horseshoe. Just remove the uh, lineup for now. That 83 really was looking to go down the inside of Benjamin Bar Bartlett. Harry Maynard's really looking for it now. Down the main straight we go as the last lap board is now pushed onto uh, out of the gantry and into the track. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Oh, a look down the inside there. Potential move for the 83 doesn't get happening. As, uh, the number 44 tries to block it as best he can. It's all very close between these drivers at the top. I better keep an eye on it. The 83 trying to just stick some defensive lines in, going through the top bend and some, uh, well, three buttons in the top bend. Because uh, we miss all that action on the YouTube live stream. Coming down the main straight, let's get our order for the final, uh, final thing on this race. Check of flag goes out. Benjamin Bartlett takes first position, followed very closely by Harry Maynard, and once again closely followed by Leo Purchase. Charles Green takes fourth, and then Logan Bennett will lock out that top five today and uh, unfortunately Reza down in eighth in that E-plate. But there we go, that is the end of that heat from the Junior Road Tax. What an action-packed one that was. So out on track now is the Junior Blues for their heat. Only five of them. We'll uh, see how this one goes as uh, we get ready for their first heat of the day. Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. So they all start grouping up together. Coming through the top, uh, through buttons and towards the top bend. Let's see what these five Junior Blues can uh, achieved today and if there'll be uh, any action if at all any so coming down the main straight now let's get this heat underway so all splitting out into a line straight away through the s's and uh, your current leader is at number one followed by number two followed by number four followed by six followed by 66 <laughs> So going around the horseshoe, the number two right behind Sam Mitchell in that number one car. Uh, top bend, 
and down the main straight is these two to keep an eye on for now as uh, they are very close together. Round Billies and through the S as we go, the number 66 not sounding too great from earlier and uh, comparing him to the others as well. Not being able to get up to speed by the looks of it, which is uh, unfortunate. I hope you'll be able to resolve it during the race. Uh, but through buttons we go and towards the top bend. Let's see what changes from these drivers. We go to Multicam on the YouTube live stream. We are live all day, so if you do want to pop over there, feel free to say hello or uh, pop out who you're supporting. That number 66. Really sounding different. Hopefully, we'll be able to keep going through this race. Uh, but meanwhile, at the top, cars one and two in first and second. Two second gap to third position, then really Winslow Morton four seconds behind uh, Jamie Dart in third. Go for another lap fast. This lap of a 35.74 set by Sam Mitchell, who is uh, the gent out in front. Razor Gaming, who's winning? Uh, currently, at the moment, Sam Mitchell is out ahead. Uh, we just got multi-town view just for now. Whilst uh, there's five of them on the circuit. Uh, let's show you. Uh, there he is. There's your lineup on just the left side of your screen there. Just uh, trying different camera angles throughout the races. Uh, there's only five of them out on circuit. So through the top bend, we are going once again. Uh, car number one still ahead of the other driver of Reese Reed and that number two. They are just sort of towing each other along the track. Reese Reed doing a personal best of a 35.80. But not a lot of pe uh, change. Unfortunately, down to four drivers. Uh, Jamie Bradfield heading into the pits, unable to uh, keep the car going at its uh, pace that it was doing. As uh, we have some annoying revving in the background. That's one of the drivers. Oh, not out in circuit yet, uh, but Sam Mitchell still ahead of Reese Reed. Jamie Dart in third still. And uh, it's all sort of quiet in the action front. Number 66 back out on circuit. Hopefully he's going to try and uh, sort of solve the issue uh, during this race. At least he's been able to keep going. And uh, he definitely is flying from before. So looks like it's been resolved. Sam Mitchell still ahead. Still no changes on the pass. Is that front? So Reese Reed still uh, trying to stay behind as best as he can. Come on, Dart says uh, Haley Dart on the YouTube live stream. Coming in third at the moment. Uh, Great to see some support on the YouTube live stream today. It does get read out during uh, the day, uh, so definitely feel free to pop on in and uh, say anything. <laughs> Jamie Bradfield still going around on the track, just trying his best to uh, keep going. He definitely does sound, that car does sound a lot better than it did uh, at the start of this heat. Uh, two minutes 40 to go. Sam Mitchell 
still out ahead. 35.74 is the fastest lap time. Uh, Reese Reed is catching up on that fastest lap with a 35.76, uh, which is matched by Jamie Dart. Uh, Rudy Winslow Morton uh, still there in fourth position. And then a lap down is Jamie Bradfield. That car number 66 who, uh, is back in the pits again. I'm not sure if he's uh, solved his issue or what the issue is. Hopefully we'll be able to get it sorted later on with uh, two minutes left to go. Cars one and two, there's really no change between the two of them. Switching the camera angles, Sam Mitchell and Reese Reed are still together. The gap is closing. Uh, not much left on time with this heat today. So the gap is closing, but so is this race very shortly. Uh, just with a minute to go, these two trying their best to stay upon one another. The number two really catching now. So top bend down the main straight. And uh, it's sort of grown again, it looks like uh, Sam Mitchell just has a little bit of a better exit coming out of that top bend, but he's gone a little bit too wide at Billy's. Nearly invited Reese Reed in. These two drivers are the opposites of each other. One does better in one corner and one does better on the other. So still not a lot of changes going from these two. We might see a change, 25 seconds left. Jamie Dart is still chilling it in that third position slot at the moment. Going around the horseshoe. Not a lot of change between these two. Seven seconds left on the clock. Uh, meaning the next time we see Sam Mitchell and Reese Reed, it'll be the last lap board. To provide the last lap in very few corners time. So around the horseshoe, through to Buttons and heading up towards the top bend. And then down the main straight we go for the last lap of this race. So there it is, last lap board is out. Will there be any change between the two drivers? And someone's exhaust has gone. On the last lap, I think that's the leader of number one. Wow, that's loud. Still being able to finish this race though. Top bend and down the main straight. And it is a very loud Sam Mitchell who will be taking the checker flag followed by Reese Reed uh, in second. And uh, in a few moments time, Jimmy Dart will be taken third. And then in a few moments time as well, will be Ru Rudy Winslow Morton taking fourth. Cart one is very loud. So there we go, that's the end of the heat for the Junior Blues. Noisy Sam taking first, that's his nickname. Of, uh, going to allocate his to him. <laughs> so there we go. That is it for them for their hint. And uh, they'll be returning later on for some more action.
So coming out onto the track now is the other group of five, this time in the Rotax form. This is the 177 and 177 Masters. Five drivers, a bit of power starting out in front with uh, Harrison Crook alongside. Uh, put your predictions in now. See what we get from these five. So very, very, very slowly <laughs> make their way to the top Ben. So let's see what we get from these five drivers in the 177 and 177 Masters class. Let's get stuff underway. So round the top, uh, sorry, round Billy's and through the S's. Put up power, squeezed back to third position as we go, as he even lifts his leg up. Uh, through the hairpin and towards the horseshoe next. And then three towards Button is next. The 72 out ahead. That is Harrison Crook. Top bend and then down the main straight, ready to fly by the camera. Once again, so Harrison Crook followed by Nathan Wells and Philip Howarth, then Ian Branfield, and then Harry Rowett is at the back for the moment. So down the back straight we go towards the hairpin and the uh, not seeing many changes just yet. Through the horse jeep and then uh, towards buttons once again. And uh, Harrison Crook just having a little bit of a gap from himself and second at the moment. Down the inside goes the number seven of uh, Philip Howard. Going back up into that second slot. Nathan Wells just trying to stick on the back end of him now. And so we go around the uh, hairpin and towards the horseshoe. Back straight we go once again. Harrison Crook still ahead of uh, Philip Howarth at the moment. Uh, Philip Howarth creeping ever so uh, ever so closely once again. Top bend and then down the main straight. You can see Philip Howarth eager to get going past. And in front, uh, Philip Howarth with the fastest lap time of a 35.01, uh, beating the fastest lap time uh, only by 5,000 tenths of a second. <laughs> So a potential move was nearly happening at the hairpin, but there is one at the horseshoe, and that is Ian Branfield on Nathan Wells. I think it's switched back now as we go to the top bend and down the main straight again. Down the inside again it goes Ian Branfield on Nathan Wells. This time manages to stay out ahead. As we go around the hairpin towards the horseshoe, these five trying to stick as close together as they can. Harry Rowett just sticking out in the back there. What's? Unfortunately, I was looking the other way. Not sure what's happened there. I nearly said, "What's happened to uh, the man that was leading?" Very unsure what's happened. There. He's popped into the pit, so I'm not really sure what's happened there. Uh, but we'll carry on down the back straight. We go down to four drivers now. So uh, Philip Howarth in front of Ian Branfield. 
Then uh, we have that Nathan Wells in third. Then Harry Rowett uh, promoted up into fourth uh, after the retirement of Harrison Crook. Uh, not sure we'll see him return in a minute or not, but we shall see. So back through the hairpin towards the horseshoe. Just over three minutes, 20 seconds on the clock and uh, still unchanged from some of these drivers. Like I said, only four in total uh, with Harrison Cook retiring uh, three laps ago. So as we go through the top bend and for another lap, let's give you a reminder uh, that we are live on YouTube if you do want to re-watch the live stream or if you want to catch it live wherever you are here at the circuit uh, then feel free to pop over there hit that subscribe button say hello and all the other bits and uh, don't forget to follow us on our socials follow Clay Pigeon Car Club on Facebook Clay Pigeon Raceway on Facebook as well and uh, on Instagram Clay Pigeon Raceway and uh, also Clay Pigeon Raceway is on TikTok uh, if you're anybody has TikTok I know all the kids have it nowadays uh, but we are on TikTok Clayperson uh, Raceway from there trying to keep up with the socials so just under two minutes to go left in this race and uh, still got our four drivers they're all sort of split it out uh, from one another so we shall be patient, see if we get any changes from the four. Uh, but it is Philip Howard, Ian Brownfield, Nathan Wells, then Harry Rowett in that order. So, down on the main straight again. Still got a minute over on the clock. We we'll see if the 46 of Ian Brownfield has uh, closed the gap at all on the timing screens as we go down the main straight once again. Uh, the gap being seven tenths and it has been brought down by a tenth, so it's now only six tenths. So over uh, just over half a second between uh, Philip and Ian down the back straight. Nathan Wells over a second and a half behind second. Still going to squeeze out a couple of laps in this heat. Top bend is uh, where the front runners are coming down the main straight once more. Philip Howard still out ahead. Uh, 20 seconds to go. He still holds the fastest lap time of 34.89. That's been unchanged for quite a while now. It's sort of everyone's slowed down a bit. Everyone's uh, a second off of. Uh, what they were doing earlier. As uh, the clock ticks over to eight, so we are on towards our last lap now, and uh, not much change. So top bend and down the main straight we go. Let's get a recap on the running order: Philip Howarth, Ian Branfield, Nathan Wells, then Harry Rowett, and uh, unfortunately losing Harrison Crook earlier. Uh, Due to an unknown issue that we know about. Uh, but hopefully, we'll be able to see him back later on the pre final. Yes, yeah, pre final. <laughs> so, top end now. And check a flag going to Philip Howarth. 
then Ian Branfield follows in second, then Nathan Wells third, then Harry Rowett takes out for the top four. So there we are, that is the end of the uh, heat for the 177 and 177 Masters. Some more action to follow. There we are. There's that one. Some jazzy music. So we go from Ron Rotax class to a, another Rotax class, a very busy one. It is the senior Rotax for their first heat of the day. We'll see uh, what sort of action we get from these 12 drivers. It's going to be a very competitive one uh, from a couple of our front runners that we have out there today. So let's get going for the heat one of one for the senior Rotax. So around they go, so through the horseshoe as we uh, go through buttons, ready, well, to get ready for uh, this first one. Nice and slowly going up towards the top bend. So here we go. Getting the flyby cam ready for this start. As we go past the start finish, it's green and ready to go. So through Billy's we go. Still managing to everybody keep it onto the track. Through the S's and down the back straight. Top three flying away quick as they can. Through towards the hairpin and towards the horseshoe. At the moment, the number 88 is ahead of the number 20. Number 20 right behind us, Cameron Crockett and Brandon Haig. So, top bend and down the main straight next. Let's get your running order ready to go. They all come flying past the screens. It's Cameron Crockett followed by Brandon Haig. Then Callum Davies in that third position. Those top three just going into the S's now as they go towards the back straight. Number 90 of Ben Page just hanging on there in fourth with a little bit of gap behind him with George Walker. Jack Warren down in sixth position. Number 88 pushed out wide going into the entrance of the uh, horseshoe. Just managing to stay out ahead just for now. Trying to keep that defensive line as we go around the top end down the main straight once more. And down the inside goes number 20 uh, going ahead just after the start finish line there on Cameron Crockett. So uh, Brandon Haig up into first. And uh, Cannon Davies now with the number 20. Uh, sorry, the number 95 behind, but it's actually now in front as we come out the exit of the uh, hairpin. Jack Gorin getting ahead of the number 39 of George Walker as uh, he was just caught out there. So a little bit of a flyby cam as we go down the main straight. Very close. Brandon Haig, followed by Cameron Davidson, Cameron Crockett, Ben Page, then Jack Gorin, then George Walker. There is a bit of a gap between first and second. Then you just got the train uh, right behind. Cameron Davies charging that one through. So it's up bend and down the main straight. Through the S's and down the back straight, just seeing the word out next to Jack Maidman. Unfortunately, lost him three laps ago. Uh, didn't spot that one on the uh, cap on the uh, timing uh, until now. Number 20 still out ahead. Number 95, Callum Davies just being able to stick it there for now in second position. Cameron Crockett in third. So we get a flyby from all the drivers. Jack Goring given a contact warning. Naughty, naughty Jack. I know he watches his back, so he's probably going to laugh at that. Uh, anyway. 
hairpin and then towards the horseshoe. Top bend next and uh, let's go for your leader. Fly by. Uh, so Brandon Haig followed by Callum Davies and Cameron Crockett. Jack Goring is up into fourth. Ben Page in fifth. George Walker sixth. Number in seventh, a switch around. Number 39, George Walker getting ahead of Ben Page. He's just been given a contact warning as well. Number 88 of Cameron Crockett defending Jack Goring as best he can. Going towards the top end, Jack down the inside and getting ahead just before we get our recap of this lap. So going down the main straight, it's a bit of a, a, bit of a train here. Going towards the top end, uh, sorry, top end, Billy's. Uh, a completely different area. Switch Switcheroos from Cameron and Jack as we go down the back. Straight, there we go. <laughs> Oddly rhymes. Uh, through the hairpin and towards the horseshoe will be next. Jack Warren getting a bit more speed coming out of some of these corners compared to uh, Cameron Crockett there. So top bend we go once more. Second sort of split away from uh, the battles of uh, Jack and Cameron. Through Billy's. And down the back straight, the number 39 of George Walker has been charging quite often uh, these last couple of laps, trying to uh, catch up with Cameron. Crockett in that number 88. Ben Page is sticking behind as well, uh, going through buttons and towards the top bend. Let's have a quick look at the multicam as uh, we get all the drivers flying around. Brandon Haig with a 2.32 second gap. 34.41 is his fastest lap time. Going through the S's and down the back straight. Number 39 just on behind uh, Cameron Crockett at the moment, trying to squeeze for that fourth position. So there goes your leader, and then here comes the rest of the pack. So trying to squeeze down the inside was the number 39 of George Walker. Uh, Cameron Crockett just squeezing him out of that uh, potential opportunity as we go into the hairpin next for another merry-go-round of this circuit. Three buttons and then towards the top bend. Jack Goring catching up with Callum Davies as we fly by for another lap. Three billies. And then towards the S is next. Number 39 really catching on Cameron Crockett in these uh, two areas. As we go to the horseshoe, Jack Goring very close now, looking for a deeper line to the number 95. Uh, doesn't have enough speed to be able to carry that one through, but uh, that gap is now closed a lot. Coming down the main straight, there goes your leader. Brandon Hayes, less than a minute to go. Jack Goring still in third. Trying to get a nicer line in some of these places. And uh, so is George Walker to try and get ahead of his man in front of him, which is uh, Cameron Crockett. Jack Goring having a little bit of a better exit there, coming out of the hairpin compared to the 95. But here we go, ladies and gentlemen, as we get towards 30 seconds left. So we're going to squeeze out an extra lap on this one as well. Uh, having a cheeky look behind uh, was uh, Mr. Davies. But Jack Goring down the inside as uh, number 95 goes a little bit far out. Jack Goring up into second position in this race at the moment. Three to the hairpin. Cameron Crocker taking a deeper line to try and defend off an opportunity by the number 39 behind. Through the horseshoe we go. Through buttons and then towards the top bend. Meanwhile, our leader, Brandon Haig, will be taking the last lap board. 
as uh, the rest of the pack comes flying on through. Cameron Crockett again taking some defensive lines, blocking the inside line as best as he can through the S's. He goes, but meanwhile we'll keep up with our leader who's going through the uh, hairpin and towards the horseshoe. Three buttons. Top bend is next. And down the main straight comes your leader for quite a while with a over two and a half second gap. Ladies and gentlemen, taking the checker flag. What is Brandon Hayes? Jack Gordon will take second and then Callum Davies rounding out the top three. Cameron Crockett manages to keep hold of that fourth position and George Walker staying behind in fifth. But there we go. That is the end of that one. And that was the senior Rotax for their heat of the day. Here engine from balloon, ready to go. Just waiting for one to be recovered. been so far. Oh, anyway, as I'm distracted, <laughs> uh, we should be getting underway in just a few moments time. So here we go for the last of the heat senior blues onto the track. Let's uh, see what we get from uh, these nine drivers as uh, we get ready for their heat. And uh, the last heat of the day. Because uh, we've got three finals next. So top bend we are to get ready for this heat. So coming down the main straight slower than everyone else. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready for their heat as it's green flagged and ready to go. As uh, a lot of curb use here for one of the drivers. Uh, but here we go. Someone losing lots of positions for some reason. Not sure why if it was an engine thing or not. But uh, as we go towards the hairpin and the horseshoe. Uh, the two corners. Our leader at the moment is the number one, followed by 14, then eight. Number one, followed by 14, followed by eight. <laughs> Almost sound like a um, auctioneer. 
Look at a 14, 14, 14. So it is Anthony Cleal followed by Sylvian Vessia, then Phil Shears, then Steve Groves in fourth position. your order at the moment Anthony Cleal with a over a second gap at the moment uh, the train of two for uh, the train of second uh, a little bit long at the moment as we go around the horseshoe and towards buttons and then we head to the top bend down the main straight we come for the flyby So six and a half minutes left on this heat. And uh, just a reminder, the pre-finals being nine minutes. So uh, the time creeps up as uh, the day goes on, bringing a lot more action to the track and uh, a lot more concentration for some of the drivers. Just like Anthony Cleo's got to concentrate to try and stay out ahead by a country mile uh, at the moment. Three seconds is the gap, 35.94 set by him, so it is a battle for second at the moment, unless something can touch the fear. God, that's not a word. Happens. <laughs> the word was there, but my brain wasn't. Um, as we go around the hairpin towards the horseshoe. For another rodeo around the track, down the inside goes number three. As uh, we go for the multicam view on the YouTube live stream. Around the top bend, coming down the start finish is your leader, Anthony Cleal. Uh, setting fast lap times around here each time. Sylvian Vessio with a 36.86. Killing uh, in second at the moment, trying to get away from third position. And uh, the others behind. Cart five, chilling in fourth at the moment. Michael Bell uh, in cart number three and fifth. Four seconds is the gap for Sylvia Investia uh, to try and claim back. Uh, Anthony Cleo has just flown away. So we dip into the 4 minute 40 mark, uh, a 5 second gap that Anthony Cleal has uh, created. So uh, I feel like we're looking for a battle at the second at the moment, the number 14 just trying to get away from Paul Alexander in that third position at the moment. Uh, Phil Shears trying to get close as well. As we, uh, we go for a flyby on the cameras. Down the inside goes one of the drivers, using a lot of curbs to uh, avoid any touchy-touchy. As we go down the back straight, part five still ahead of the number three, as I get a nice cold breeze coming to the commentary box, that's lovely. Uh, going through the hairpin towards the horseshoe. The 14 ahead still of the rest of those gents. So coming flying by now is Anthony Cleo, contact one and given to Michael Bell in the cart number four, uh, cart number three, in four, there we go, we'll get it right someday. Around the S is a switch made there by the number 14 and cart five, those two are now close together, down the inside of, what is that, that's more outside inside of uh, Sylvia Vesio, Paul Alexander getting ahead, uh, had a lot more pace coming down. Uh, that, that back straight earlier uh, but we're going to the top bend now for another royal uh, another go of uh, this of this heat uh, the number 14 not looking very happy we go around Billy's uh, through the S's someone else going a bit slower there so Steve Groves up into fourth as uh, Sylvie Messier is going down a few spots uh, throughout these last couple of laps. Two minutes 40 on the clock. As uh, we go through buttons and towards the 
top bend. We are concentrating on the second and third position drivers coming down the main straight now. Uh, Charts five and three. Uh, Michael Bell with some pace out of nowhere as well. Uh, Steve Rose making a position that Lapp and Tom Parker did as well. So around the hairpin and towards the horseshoe next. Going a little bit wider coming out there was uh, cart number five of Paul Alexander. So getting ready for the top bend coming down the main straight. Still no changes by a few of these drivers. Uh, Chris Lord and Alex Kemp coming over the line there in 8th and 9th. Anthony Cleo cruised away, and is cruising away. 8.8 uh, .8 second gap, and uh, that looks like one of the drivers just had to disappear. That is the number 14 of Sylvian Vessi, who had an issue for a couple of laps and has had to. Uh, Unfortunately, just cross country into the grass to uh, unfortunately end his day, I'm afraid, on this, well, not day, but, you know, but end this heat. So hopefully we'll be able to see him a bit later on and get stuff going. Around the horseshoe and sort of through buttons. Uh, second and third. 38 seconds left on the clock. Giving us a uh, good little race here. Nine seconds is the gap today from first and second. That is the biggest gap we got. And an opportunity tried to be made there by I think that was Michael Bell in third. And uh, yeah, it was. Just tried his best, but unfortunately a bit too much left hand, uh, sorry, right hand lock on his steering wheel. Uh, caused him to not be able to charge that one forward. He straightened out another lap as well. Uh, thanks to that 8.69 second gap. It is closing, uh, but I think we uh, need a whole other race to even try to catch up with Sir Anthony Clear at this point. So down the back straight go, second, third and fourth, uh, through the hairpin and towards the horseshoe. Uh, I don't think we're going to see many uh, changes between these uh, three drivers. Top bend now, here goes our leader, uh, Anthony Cleal, who's uh, had that big gap for all the race, really. Uh, so that last lap board is out. Through the S's goes Anthony Cleal down the back straight. He had a good start to this race and has just uh, managed to keep it going through the rest of it. Around the horseshoe. Three buttons and uh, up to the top bend. And we will have our checker flag given out to the leader of this race and has uh, dominated this race by many, many seconds. Cart number one. Anthony Cleal takes first place as they hiccup in between. And then taking. Ooh, that was close between fifth. Uh, it's cart five and three. Uh, Paul Alexander takes second. And then Michael Bale takes third. Steve Rose fourth and then taking out the top five is Phil Shears. So we go. That is, I believe, all of the uh, all of the heats done for today. We're going to be moving on to the pre-finals next. Let's see what we get from uh, all the classes very shortly. Oh, thumbs up there by. Uh... Oh dear. Uh, thumbs up there by Sylvian Vessia. I don't know why I'm yawning. Oh, I know why I'm yawning. I was still up at. Uh, still up at half 11 last night. Uh, getting the stream ready. Let's stand up because Honda Cadet's next.
Everybody who's uh, on the YouTube live stream, all the heats are done. Uh, so we're going to our free finals over. <laughs> Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for the free finals for day one of the Wessex Challenge, and uh, we come back with the Honda Cadets. Who, uh, last on their heat, we have the uh, Fair Club Sister Sandwich. And that's what you get for swear, uh, weaving on down the back straight. Uh, Ava Morris there. Uh, bit too much weaving and has uh, spun herself out onto the back straight there, unfortunately. But uh, meanwhile, let's get ready for the pre final. So, looks like already we're going round again. So, going round once more. As we uh, get ready to go again. So, sign them back down again. As we uh, just wait for Ava Morris to uh, join back up to the rest of the cadets. So here we go, through buttons and towards the top bend. And uh, I think everybody's got back into their positions. And we're going around again. <laughs> so there we go. Everybody, I think, is now back in their positions properly. And uh, let's go for third time's a charm. So as we go back down again. Let's see, third time's a charm, ladies and gentlemen. And we have a rabbit going down the main straight. <laughs> uh, that's a first, we have a rabbit on the track. Or oh, a bunny. That's, uh, that's something, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's hopefully gonna come off the circuit as, uh, we are gonna have to go around again. This time, because of a rabbit. <laughs> Welcome to Clay Pigeon, everyone. Where, uh, we have rabbit racing. <laughs> oh dear. Hopefully I'll be able to, uh, leave the circuit and, uh, hopefully be able to get underway. One of the marshals just uh, hopefully see. But anyway, uh, back to the top bend after a uh, rabbit bunny, bunny rabbit. I believe we are going to be going again. So we're not. Not quite sure what's going on anymore. <laughs> so, we'll hopefully get this one underway shortly. As uh, I think this is attempt number five. To be fair, two of them 
uh, one of them due to a rabbit, but anyway. <laughs> So, getting them slowed down once again. Let's try and get this one underway. Coming down the main straight. Uh, very judgmental start there. Uh, but as we get going round the top, uh, for round Billy's. As uh, we go through the S's and down the back straight, Max Level we did start in third. Uh, Cross the line first, coming over on the formation lap. But uh, never mind. Towards the horseshoe and around towards buttons. Better fair cliff already at the back end of Max Lovell as we go to the top bend and down at the main straight. Let's get your running order as we get the flyby from the Honda Cadets. So down the double down the triple down the inside goes better Fairclough, Alice Fairclough, and Ava Morris, the three girls. Straight ahead of Max Level there. As that we go through buttons now. Through towards the top bend. Let's get another updated running order once more. So it's the number 63 followed by 30, then 32. And there's Max Level down in fourth. Jada Mead fifth. Conrad Barton at sixth. Marley Fisher seventh. Jensen Walker eighth. Luke McGowell in ninth. And then Charlie White will be rounding out the top 10 drivers and uh, all the 10 drivers. So round we go. It's the sisters one, two at the moment. Ava Morris behind them at the moment. Ava Morris looking going down the inside of Alice there. Going up towards. And the bunny's on the top track. Oh no. Oh, I think it's just started into pit lane. Oh dear. This is an interesting pre-final. Right, hopefully that uh, hopefully that bunny will stay in the pit lane. Uh, anyway, going through the S's down the back straight. Better Fairclough still ahead of Alice Fairclough. Uh, Ava Morris in third. And the bunny's back out of the pit lane. Coming down the main straight comes the bunny. <laughs> oh dear, here we go. Coming down the main straight now is the bunny, but behind them is Bella, Fe uh, Bella and Alice Fairclough. Oh god. This, but this, this is running for his life. Anyway, back to the proper action. Uh, we have Bella Fairclough still ahead of the pack at the moment, coming down the back straight. Ava Morris looking to go around the outside, uh, not at the moment. As we go around the hairpin towards the horseshoe, uh, as we go towards the buttons next. And uh, back round the main straight, a lot of the marshals trying to get this bunny gone. Uh, meanwhile, back to the action. There's a little bit of uh, tussling going on between the top four. Better fair club still ahead. Ava Morris going down the inside of Alice. Alice still has the inside line. Ava Morris grinding on the curb. And uh, it's all switching over now. So as we go back towards the... Hairpin and Horseshoe. Better Fairclough now has a bit of a gap. Alice Fairclough behind and Max Level up into third. And uh, I think Ava Morris is back down to fifth. And uh, as we go around the top bend, down the main straight once more, we'll get a flyby cam going. And uh, pass we go. So Better Fairclough followed by Alice Fairclough, then Max Level. Jada Mead in fourth, followed by Ava Morris. As we go through the S's down the back straight. A couple of the marshals still looking out for where that rabbit has disappeared to. <laughs> this, this is an interesting pre-final. <laughs> right, round the horseshoe we go. The, the uh, Fair Club sisters in first and second. As we go towards the top bend. 
and down the main straight once more let's go for the multi-cam view on the youtube live stream as we go down the main straight better fairclough followed by alice fairclough uh jada mead in third over morris going up into fourth and then max level down in fifth now uh, then we've got a crew of three, Marley Fisher, Conrad Barton and Jens Walker there in a train of three on their own. Then we've got Luke McGall and Charlie White uh, just going down the back straight now. So, around the horseshoe, Ava Morris sneaking up into third by the looks of it. Max Lovell's looking in there a lot as well. Uh, and towards the top bend, we've got three minutes 38 left on the clock. Coming down the top bend, uh, top bend and main straight now is Bella Fairclough, followed by Alice Fairclough, and then Ava Morris back up into that third position slot once more. Jaden Mead, and uh, it looks like the marshals have found the bunny rabbit again. Bunny rabbit, bunny rabbit, run! Oh, no. This is uh oh, and here we go. It's back on the main straight. It's going back to Billy's. Anyway, <laughs> only at Clay Pigeon you get a rabbit during a cadet, <laughs> cadet pre-final. Welcome to the Wessex Challenge, everybody. Featuring rabbit. All right, here we go. Coming down the main straight, your racers, not rabbits. Better Fairclough, followed by Alice Fairclough. Ava Morris still in third. Jaden, Jaden Mead in fourth, with Max Level behind as we go through the S's, down the back straight, the number 63 still ahead. Alice Fairclough staying behind her sister as best as she can, Ava Morris in third. Just trying to get past Alice who's been defending quite well in this, uh, this race so far. So around the top bend and down the main straight we go once more. Let's get a flyby. Or the end of the flyby anyway. Yellow fly is going out at the uh, top bend. As they, uh, I think they found where the uh, rabbit's hiding. Oh god. Down the back straight. And it's Fairclough going down the ins... Trying to look down the inside of her sister then by the looks of it. As we keep going down the, uh, through the hairpin, through the horseshoe, Ava Morris going out ahead of Alice Fairclough. Alice Fairclough on the outside is allowed another driver through as well. And the rabbit's back onto the track again. Oh no, it's going the wrong way. Watch out, guys. Rabbit. <laughs> So around Billy's, through the S's, we go once more. It's Bella Fairclough, by, followed by Ava Morris, and then Alice Fairclough. We got the Fairclough sandwich again. Through the hairpin and the horseshoe once more. The marshal's trying to keep eyes on where this rabbit is. Oh god. So, meanwhile, 48 seconds left on the clock. Uh, Bella Fairclough followed by Ava Morris. Alice Fairclough just hanging out in third at the moment. It's got to defend off Jaden Mead and Max Level behind as uh, they go down the inside of Alice Fairclough using a lot of curb as it cost her a lot of time. And uh, she's now down into fifth, unfortunately, as we go around the hairpin and towards the horseshoe once more. 22 seconds left on the clock. Bella Fairclough still out ahead. Top bend. And down the main straight. Let's get a flyby on the YouTube live stream. Three seconds left. We can manage to squeeze out an extra lap in this one. As uh, our updated list is Jensen Walker making up a position. And then, unfortunately, Alice Fairclough losing a couple. Max Lovell... Make a move down the inside of the S's. Uh, up into third. Alice Fairclough looking down the inside of both drivers. Tries to sneak through on the fourth position. Just has to hand stay there at the moment. Trying our best to stay there. As we go to the top bend now, we're going for the last lap of this pre-final for the Honda Cadets. So. Better Fairclough, still ahead at the moment. 
Max Lovell up into third. Through the S's. Down the back straight. Bella Fairclough trying to defend off Ava Morris as best as she can. We go towards the hairpin next. Horseshoe. Ava Morris still behind. Max Lovell taking a more inside line to defend off the other drivers. But meanwhile, we'll head back to the top. Alice Fairclough going down the inside, ready for the top bend. But nevertheless, let's keep going, because down the main straight comes your winner for this one. Ladies and gentlemen, Bella Fairclough taking the checker flag, followed by Ava Morris and Max Lovell. Jaden Mead will take fourth, and then Alice Fairclough fifth at the end of that one. But uh, once again, another very... Strong day for Bella Fairclough at the moment. Uh, winning her last heat and this pre-final. Is she going to lock it out another Tongan again? We shall find out, but a very interesting uh, pre-final indeed. Honda Cadet pre-final featuring Rabbit. Hopefully that Rabbit doesn't return later on. Just reflecting back, I just realised I commentated on a rabbit. <laughs> well done to the marshal who kept just running around the whole entire circuit, that whole race. <laughs> it's like watching cat and mouse almost. It's like a scene out of Tom and Jerry. <laughs> just with a rabbit and a human. Right, so... Coming out onto the, uh, to the track now with some Mini Max pre-final. Hopefully not including Rabbit. Anyway, let's see what we're going to get from the Mini Maxes. We've got 14 drivers out there on the circuits as a, a few more start coming on. So I feel like we might have a re-go on the start. Unless uh, the other two will be able to catch up quickly. See what we get from the Mini Maxes. So as they come up towards Buttons and the top bend, we shall see how we go. So uh, slowly moving to the top bend and uh, coming down the main straight. And uh, we are a go on this one first time. So let's see who Gets out ahead, there was a spin by one of the drivers back there, but uh, going down the back straight. Let's see who goes where, and uh, who's going to be ending up where. So going through the hairpin and towards the horseshoe. It is the 45 followed by 19. Joshua Withcombe and Lucas Howe. So as we go ready for the flyby camera, Let's get your updated order. So it's Joshua Withcombe followed by Lucas Howell, then Kai V, then Jarek Messers, then Danny Newman. Joshua B in sixth position. Uh, Charlie Parker seventh. Freddie Baker eighth. Uh, Emily Cotty in ninth. And then Zach Turner will be in tenth. So going towards the top end, Lucas Howell on the uh, back of uh, Joshua Withcombe there, just trying to stick behind and trying to stay within him. 37.07 is Lucas Howell's fastest lap time, he's the fastest out there on the circuit at the moment as we're going down the back straight, around the hairpin and towards the horseshoe. So down the main straight we go. The top three are all together now. Uh, starting to group up. And uh, here come the rest of the drivers. Flicking the cameras back and forth. Uh, but at the moment, Joshua Wifkin still hanging out ahead of Lucas Howe. And then Kai V just uh, hanging out and watching for now. Uh, fourth position does have 
Uh, Jarek Metters uh, does have Danny Newman and Joshua Bud uh, Budgum. I hope I'm saying his, his surname correctly. I've never known. So, just over six and a half minutes to go as we come flying down the main straight towards Billy's. Uh, Lucas Howell up into first. Fast lap time of 36.57 uh, with the 45 there and the 75 in third. Let's go to the Multicam view for a little bit on the YouTube live stream. We are still live over on YouTube if you do want to watch it and uh, catch, come the, uh, catch a couple of the camera angles that we've got going. Uh, on uh, so as we go through the top bend and down the main straight Lucas Howe with a little bit of a gap now uh, to him and the other two drivers behind uh, being Joshua Withcombe and Ty V uh, Jared Metters does have uh, Joshua B and Danny Newman around trying to uh, number 52 trying to stay out ahead now of uh, the pack that is behind him So down the main street comes your leaders with uh, Joshua Withcombe right behind Lucas Howe now. Joshua Withcombe, fast lap, 36.14. Uh, that's what he managed to push out of that cart uh, this time round. So as we go back to the live action on the cameras, as you can see going around the horseshoe now is Lucas Howe followed by the 45 and then 75. Uh, the number 52, just a little bit far behind, uh, just under four seconds uh, is where he's at at the moment. As uh, we come for another flyby with the top three. They're in a train, but it's the guy in second who makes a move. And then it's the guy in third who comes back. And then Lucas Howe comes back again. So it's all a bit of a switcheroo who goes where I'm going to go here moment. And uh, Lucas Howell down into second after all of that. And it is the number 75 with a GoPro who will be uh, out ahead. So down the main straight we come. Once again, Lucas Howell already looking around the outside of Kai. Uh, just uh, Mr. V. Well, that's a, that's a nickname we can go for. Uh, Mr. V just managing to stay out ahead uh, just for now uh, with an asterisk that could change at any moment in time. So keeping on going through, Lucas Howe going down the inside into the entrance of the horseshoe. And uh, I think they did touch and he's uh, respectively given that position back, which is quite nice of him. Always like to see that uh, during these races. So keep going on. Lucas Howell tries again, and this time it looks like it's a lot cleaner. It has also invited, though, Joshua Withcombe uh, into his spot this time. So uh, that's going to switch back there. These three just switching back all the time. Uh, all the other drivers staying in their positions at the moment, apart from one going into the hairpin. Trying to stick out ahead, and he has managed to do that. Uh, that driver being the number 92, that is... Uh, Jack West, who's uh, I think he's just gone up into uh, that ninth position, I believe. Uh, Kai V losing two positions at one. Lucas Howell back in the lead. Uh, Kai V is the one with the fastest lap. Mr. V with a 3608. There's uh, a couple more drivers switching positions. The 49 now ahead of the 53. Harry Cottrell ahead of Jarek Metters. So uh, we bring back the. Uh, live timing segment of uh, the live stream. So down the main straight, Lucas Howell still ahead, over two minutes to go still. As we go to the top bend, Joshua Withcombe catching a little bit now through the S's. And uh, Lucas still ahead for the minute. Joshua Withcombe still just trying to find a way to get ahead. So uh, we keep going through you can see that on the live stream 
So let's go for another flyby and uh, let's get the running order once more. So Lucas Howell followed by uh, Joshua Whitcomb, then Kai uh, V. Or Mr. V, we're going, I've been calling the last couple of laps. Uh, Joshua V in uh, fourth, Danny Newman in fifth. And uh, that is your top five for that one. Uh, back to the hairpin though, we've got a little bit of action and movement between the three drivers in that top three positions. Uh, the 19 ahead of the 45 and uh, ahead of him uh, then behind the 45 it's the 75. We'll get there eventually. Down the main straight again, over a minute to go. And uh, we've still got a lot of action to have from these top three. Uh, the gap between third and fourth is uh, near enough five seconds and it is 5.2 seconds is that gap fast as that goes to Jack West of a 35.9.0 did it uh, two laps ago uh, whilst we were concentrating on our top three drivers uh, doing switch roos and uh, it looks like it might happen again the 75 right on the back end of the 45 Joshua Withcomb just hanging out in second and defending that second slot another fly by camera moment through Billy's Unchanged at the moment. Sort of spreading out between those three. Meanwhile, Joshua B is uh, defending off Danny Newman uh, down in fourth and fifth. So uh, they're going through the hairpin. Very wide was the uh, 52. It just allowed 42 to uh, just absolutely just slot on through. Danny Newman up into fourth. Will he be able to chase down our charging leaders? Uh, there is a uh, big gap. Meanwhile, Jack West given a contact warning. Uh, down in eighth position. We are on the last lap of this race as well. So let's concentrate back to our top three drivers of uh, Lucas Howell, Joshua Withcomb and Kai V. So going through the hairpin, now the horseshoe. It's in the background there. A couple of moves potentially being made. It is nearly three wide coming out the exit of the horseshoe, which definitely didn't work. But anyway, top bend coming down the main straight now and winning this pre-final is Lucas Howe. Followed by Joshua Withcomb, then Kai V. And uh, taking at the end of this one, uh, fourth position goes to Joshua B. Jack West in fifth. Harry Cottrell, 6th, Jarek Metters, 7th, Charlie Parker, 8th, Ethan Carney in ninth, and by the looks of it, Danny Newman just right out of this one. Not sure what happened to him. Oh, he might be the one digging his car out the top end. Unfortunately, Danny Newman ending this one in the tyre wall, which is a shame. And uh, he's still going to come and finish the race as he comes down the main straight. Let's give him a solo, solo flyby. There we go. So what was looking promising from him uh, in that top five, unfortunately. Uh, a little mistake there, not sure what happened, but nevertheless, that is the Minimax pre-final complete. We'll see what we'll get next. Anybody who's just tuned into the YouTube live stream, we just had the Honda Cadets and the Minimax pre finals. Uh, we still got a lot more racing to go today. And uh, once these pre finals are done, I believe there is a short break. Uh, so I'll be munching on some lunch. Whilst all of you could be listening to some music from Epidemic Sound, uh, we have lined up. Here we go. It's junior road tax time. So here we go. Here we go. It's uh, it's 
time for the Junior Rotex uh, pre pre final. I don't know what it's said like. Uh, 19 drivers once again, and uh, let's see what we're going to get from these 19 juniors in the Rotax form. So let's see what action we get from these drivers. Happening very shortly. Here we go, here we go, here we go. So one of the drivers pulling off just before the start, unfortunately, but let's get ready for this one. Coming down the main straight now, let's get this restarted by the of it. We're not happy with that one. So we're going to go round again and uh, hopefully start this one well. So bunching them all back up again, even though they weren't really unbunched. So around the hairpin and ho uh, horseshoe even, we'll get the names right. Up towards buttons and uh, we'll get ready for the pre-final to get underway. So coming at the top bent, are we going to get somebody joining in? And around they come, we are underway for the Junior Rotax pre-final. So through the S's, down the back straight. I don't don't know if there was a swear word then, but if there was, I do apologise. <laughs> so, getting around the horseshoe. Uh, somebody did swear behind I think somebody swore behind me, I'm not sure. If you did hear it, I do apologise. It's really annoying when people climb up here and swear. Appropriate, isn't it? So, down the main straight, let's get your running order up for you all. So, it's Benjamin Bartlett, followed by Charles Green, then Alfie Davies. The plate of Reza in fourth. Harry Maynard in fifth. Finn Smith in sixth. I don't know why I'm saying it like that, but there we go. That's your top six at the moment. So we go around the hairpin. A little bit of a uh, kerfuffle going on there. Uh, slowed down, I think it was our leaders at the time. Uh, the... Or a couple of the drivers anyway. Uh, let's go back to the top Ben for who's going to be leading after this lap. So as we come down the main straight, let's get a flyby on the YouTube live streamers as well. So Charles Green followed by Alfie Davies and the E plate of Reza S in third position. Harry Maynard in fourth, and uh, Finn Smith rounding out the top five as we go down the back straight for uh, the next lap of this race. Alfie Davies creeping at the back of Charles Green now as we go around the horseshoe. And three buttons. Up towards the top bend next. And uh, we go round once more. So they fly on through. Fastest lap. At the moment it's with Finn Smith. Uh, but the 35 won three. As uh, they're all going down the back straight now. We've got multi-cam on the YouTube live stream if you do want to watch it. Uh, three of their means. It's in the uh, cafe and throughout the building. Uh, the 74 is still behind the 77. Uh, they're the top three creeping behind one another as close as they can. And uh, as they come on by, Charles Green is still ahead at the moment. Does have Alfie Davies right behind, sweeping through the S's. And uh, down the back straight we go once again. The E-plate creeping behind Alfie Davies once more. Around the horseshoe. We are going now. Alfie Davies just sticking behind as best he can as we go through towards the top bend. And uh, down the main straight once more. Ben Smith up into fourth position and also reclaiming the fastest lap of the 30 
Uh, well, I did have a 34.76, being beat by Daniel Tribe down in 12 with the uh, 34.62. So around the hairpin and towards the horseshoe is next. The 74 is trying to creep as best he can up towards that first position slot. Top bend again, a quick tire will repair, so uh, unable to overtake there for now. As we go back towards Billy's once again. Uh, the, ninth, uh, the 74 of Alfie Davies really looking for a move uh, back then. He's trying to, trying to find that gap. So top seven all in the train with one another. Not being able to unstick from one another. The 19, Finn Smith going down the inside of the E-plate, pushing him uh, pushing him a little bit wider to get that third position. So uh, there is that one. Let's get this train of, six, uh, train of seven in a uh, little bit of a flyby. Too wide going before the entrance of the S's. It's a bit touchy between the 71 and 80. 93 I think that's a uh, split the pack just a little bit so Finn Smith brave dive down the inside of the horseshoe and has uh, claimed that second position now flying in as quick as he could as we go down the main straight 77 followed by 19 followed by Alfie Davies in the 74 then Reza in the E plate in fourth down and uh, there we go Finn Smith on the S's ahead it's all switching over on the front three and then the pack of four behind for that fourth position slot is uh, sort of chilled out at the moment as uh, we go around around buttons and down the main straight once again another flyby Daniel Tribe up into 8th position. He still has the fastest lap time. That's 34-4-6. Uh, uh, could that change now that Finn Smith's out ahead? We never know. As uh, we're nearing... Uh, well, nearing 3 minutes 20 seconds. Still a lot of change to be made to this race yet. We've still got a lot of time left. Let's switch to the multicam view on the YouTube live stream. The 19 followed by 77 and then Alfie Davies in the 74. Sticking out between each other at the moment. Going down the back straight. 71 followed by the E plate. And uh, just noticing on the timing, the 71 not picking up on the... Uh, timing so uh, we won't use that just for now so it's 19 followed by 77 74 then that's 71 but meanwhile the third position down the inside Alfie Davies on Charles Green Alfie Davies now on the charge for Finn Smith out ahead spin at Billy's by one of the other drivers but we'll focus back to the top three as the rest of that pack and that pack of four coming closer now to join in to that top three battle. But here we go, down the main straight is the number 19 of Finn Smith. Yellow flag still out at Billy's. Around we go, through the S's, down the back straight. A quick flick of the head by Alfie Davies there to look to see who's behind him. Don't worry, he's still there. He is still there because he's going around the horseshoe with you. The number 77, Charles Green behind. As uh, we go down towards the top bend and once more for another lap. One minute 25 left on the clock. We go ready once again. As all the drivers come flying through Billy's. Finn Smith still out ahead at the moment. Daniel Tribe is the one who's got the fastest lap time still. No one's ever uh, been able to creep towards that 34-4-6 that he set 
uh, at lap 8. We're now on lap 13 of this race uh, with uh, 51 seconds left on the clock. Very odd number to land it on. Uh, but meanwhile, uh, we've had the 71 catch up with Charles Green in the third position. Uh, we will remove the timing screen just for a second as I just remembered the 71 is uh, out there on the circuit, just not picking up on the transponder front. So around the horseshoe we go. 71 behind the 77. Top bend and down the main straight we come once more. Let's get a flyby on the camera. On the YouTube live stream, we've got a couple of people watching over there. Nine seconds left on the clock, so we're squeezing out another lap. And there's still no change between these drivers at the moment as uh, we're going around the hairpin and towards the horseshoe. And uh, we go towards three buttons and towards the top bend to get ready to end another lap and come towards the last lap of this race. So Finn Smith coming over the line very shortly. Last lap board is out. So Finn Smith followed by Alfie Davies and Charles Green at the E-plate of Reza, e uh, Reza S is in fifth uh, because we do have that 71 card out there. A few moves and changes made back at the hairpin. Here we go, top bend next. And then towards the top bend, here we go, down the main straight and uh, taking the win for this one. It's gonna be Finn Smith, followed by Alfie Davies, then Charles Green. Benjamin Barlow take uh, fourth. Hang on, we better check where the 71 is. Uh, so the 71 took third, so Charles Green is in fourth. Uh, Benjamin Bartlett fifth, Reza C. Oh, Resurrest. <laughs> the E-plate in uh, sixth. Harry Maynard seventh. And I'm going to stop saying the rest of the line because I'm probably going to get confused myself. But there we go. That is your order. It's 19 at 74. Then the 71 that's been hidden from the timing. So there we go. That is the Junior Road Tax pre-final. And uh, we'll see them later on for the finals. The grand finals. Later on. A lot of action already happening here of day one of the Wessex Challenge. Don't forget we've got tomorrow as well that does count towards this weekend. Uh, even though tomorrow is round four. So here we go, one of the smaller grids out there at the moment. Uh, one of the two small grids. Uh, it's time for the Junior Blues for their pre-final as uh, we go around for the formation. So through towards the top bend and uh, we'll get this pre-final underway. So down the main straight we come and away we go for the pre-final of the Junior Blues. As we go through the S's down the back straight, it's the number one followed by two, followed by four. Great to see the number 66, Jamie Bradfield back out again. After having to retire on the last one. We'll get your updated order as they come through the top bend and down the main straight. 
Let's get your order. So it is car one. Sam Mitchell followed by Reese Reed. Jamie Bradfield, the number 66 in third. Jamie Dart, fourth. And Rudy Winslow Morton in fifth. Like a light lighting up in the dark You make it right, I forgot how to act It's so classic Every time you make me nervous and I lose my words It's been a while since I forgot the most simple words Now I know why I never would out before I know it would always turn out bad, so bad But every time we start a fight, we always stop in time We both know how to be gentle, never cross the line I feel cool when you're around Like nothing can break
There we go. Just had to have a bit of a comfort break, unfortunately. Um, just whilst this pre-final is going on. Uh, so last lap, Sam Mitchell, followed by Reese Reed, then Jamie Dart, then Rudy Winslow Morton, and then uh, the action you saw uh, on the bottom right of your screen was uh, one of the drivers. Not sure what happened to his car there. Check flag for the Junior Blue Free Final. So there we are with the end of the Junior Blue Pre Final. Sam Mitchell followed by Reese Reed at the first of that time with a 35.86. Jamie Dart takes third with a 36.95. Uh, we have Rudy Winslow Morton that will be coming round very shortly. Uh, she'll take fourth. And uh, unfortunately losing uh, Jimmy Bradfield once again. Uh, not sure what happened on his one there. Uh, but there we go. That is the Junior Bleed pre-final complete. And uh, we'll be back next for our next, next pre-final very shortly. Really could do with um, putting a uh, microphone over the gantry just for uh, on track noise. That'd be absolutely brilliant. a camera <laughs> so it's time for the 177 and 177 uh, masters uh, pre-final let's see how this one's gonna plan out uh, we have nine minutes to show off these uh, 177s see what they can do uh, with the five drivers out there on the circuit so we'll start this one off and then we'll get to the action on track. So, so top bend, and we'll get underway for the start of the 177 and 177 pre-final. We'll uh, get you through the first lap. Philip Howarth going quite deep into the corner. Uh, still, a, still managing to keep into second though. So we go down the back straight and then follow up to the hairpin through to the horseshoe. The uh, number 46 of Ian Branfield out ahead. Top bend. We'll get a flyby camera and we'll get your order for you all. There's Ian Branfield, followed by Philip Howarth, Nathan Wells, Harrison Crook, then Harry Rowett. And uh, Philip Howarth already on the charge to go ahead.
Had me going good, but I left a scar. You invite me and then you turn me down. Get my hopes up and then you're gone. I fall for every word that you say to me. So hard, being drawn to you so easily. I am stuck in a loop of chemicals. What's the point? Never call me And then I see you on the street Said your heart just skipped a beat And that you lose me It's always the same story with you But I just cannot refuse you I've said after this I'm not a So let's get the updates for the 177 and 177 Masters uh, final, uh, pre-final here. Uh, so Harrison Crook is currently leading uh, by a second at the moment. Uh, Philip Howarth in second, Ian Brownfield third, Harry Rowett in fourth, Nathan Wells in fifth. It's been pretty close between the top three uh, throughout this one. 3501 is the fast lap time set by Harrison Crook. As uh, we get ready for the end of this pre-final. So going around the last couple of corners as uh, we go to the top bend. Down the main straight and we get going for the checkered flag. Harrison Crook taking the win by one and a half seconds. Philip Howard third. Like I said, Ian Brownfield for uh, third, Harry Rowett fourth, and then Nathan Wells taking the top five to finish. So just taking a couple of comfort breaks there. Just uh, to hopefully recover my voice. <laughs> it's starting to hurt a little, but uh, we'll be here for the next ones. The next two senior lots. So here we go, ladies and gents, for the senior road tax now for their pre final. We uh, go for the formation lap here. So down the back straight we go. See how this one's going to play out for all the drivers here, and uh, see what sort of action we get. So we have the number 20 and 15, uh, Brandon Haig and Jack Goring. That uh, will be starting this one off. As uh, in the background sounds like someone wants to kill their engine. Um, so, top bend. And uh, we'll get underway for the Senior Rotex pre-final. So, coming down the main straight. It's a go. So, who's going to be out in front at the end of the, at the, end of the start of this lap? Random words so coming out of my mouth. Going down the back straight. It's a 20 followed by the 95. So Brandon Haig followed by Cannon Day. Yeah, Cannon Davies. As they go around the horseshoe and up towards. Uh, well, three buttons and up towards the top end. We'll get your updated order with a flyby as they come down the main straight now. So it's Brandon Haig followed by Cannon Davies, Cameron Crockett, then Jack Goring down in fourth position, Ben Page in the top five. George Walker sick and we will stop there with more changes to happen near the back as uh, it looked like someone had a bit of a gr skateboard grind ac across the uh, sausage curve at the back and that was uh, the number 62 of uh, Ben Fichetti. Jack Maven given a uh, contact warning 
as we go back round for another lap of the circuit. So, Brandon Hay, Callum Davies, Cameron Crockett, that is your top three. It's unchanged at the moment. Cameron Crockett on the back end of Callum Davies at the moment. We go through the S's and down the back straight. Jack Goring just behind. Currently defending off fifth and sixth uh, behind him. So through buttons and the top bend. And then down the main straight we go once again. We'll go to the multicam view that we have been using quite a lot today. Shows you three areas of the track all at once. Ben Fighetti making a move back there on Alex Heron through the S's. Trying to. Alex Heron trying to gain that back. Meanwhile, at the front, Brandon Haig driving away from the rest of the pack. The number 88 of Cameron Crockett is in second, uh, with Jack Goran in third. Not sure what's happened between those drivers there. So coming down the main straight once more as we get the rest of the field fly on through. Jack Goran right on the back end of Cameron Crockett. Callum Davies down in fourth position, going through the S's now and down the back straight. Jack Goran just chilling behind at the current time. Brandon Haig with a 34.75. It's the fastest lap time uh, set in the previous lap. 1.94 second gap between him and Cameron Crockett. Jack Goran is creeping behind those, so coming down the main straight we go. Jack Goran looking for any move that he can. Around at Billy's we go, trying to look for that inside line, but defended off by Cameron Crockett. So uh, locking it out as best as he can as we go around the hairpin and towards the horseshoe. Top bend next. And uh, Brandon Haig just absolutely flying away for now. Five and a half minutes under we are now. Finn Wheatley unfortunately in the pits a couple of laps ago. Uh, so hopefully we'll see him later on in the final. As uh, there is a little break in between. I do love a good break. Jack Goring still looking for an opportunity to overtake Cameron Crockett. As we go up towards the top bend now for the main straight as uh, Brandon Haig just goes over the line there and uh, the rest of the field come and a final three two second gap 2.48 to be exact Cameron's still not finding the pace to try and catch up with Brandon Haig does have Jack Goran and the rest of the pack behind him as we go around the horseshoe and up through buttons towards the top bend. 11 carts out on track, flying on through once more. Jack Goring looking for the inside line there. Trying to get around him, does the switch back. Cameron proper locks it out. Uh, not allowed Jack to go any further forward. Uh, so we go through once again. That switchback moves look proper nice until uh, Cameron Crockett locked it out. So we go to the top bend once again. Your leader leading by what probably will be over two and a half seconds. Jack Goren trying the same move again and it's uh, once again defended off by the number 88. Uh, meanwhile, Callum Davies is just defending off uh, George Walker, who has uh, been there. And uh, Flynn Wheatley had a mechanical issue, as I've just seen it on the screen now. So, top bend, and uh, will we see another attempt by Jack Goring as we come down the main straight once again? Go into the entrance of. Billy, this time he does it, but I think Cameron didn't realise he was there. And uh, it's just caused Jack to 
mount the side of him, and uh, unfortunately, he's also spun at the S's. All right, so a couple of uh, unfortunate moves there by Jack. And uh, has put them both out of contention. Uh, Cameron Crockett trying to come back as best he can. Jack trying to keep that move going. Uh, but nevertheless, we'll get to our new line. So, Brandon Haig followed by Callum Davies and Jack Maven. Cameron Crockett ending up into the pits at the end of that one. And uh, Jack Goran is managing to keep going. He does get a contact warning for that one. So, through the SSC goes. But meanwhile, going back to our leader, who's leading by 3.89 seconds. Nearly reaching the four-second mark in that one. Meanwhile, there's two minutes and four seconds left. Well, there was, anyway, at some point. Coming down the main straight. Jack Maven in third. Bit of a gap between him and Ben Page, who still has George Walker behind. We'll go back to the multi-cam review for the last uh, couple of minutes of this race. Bit spread out from the top pack now. I see uh, top three are evenly spread out. As uh, Brandon Hay going over the line, 4.3 seconds later is Callum Davies and Jack Maven. Ben Page is in fourth. With uh, George Walker still chilling behind him for the moment. Jack Goring still going in that 10th position slot, trying to catch up with the rest of the pack of Daniel Beers, Ben Fichetti and Alex Heron, uh, who are in a train of three at the moment near that back slot. Ben Fichetti looking for the outside. And has just been squeezed out by the 45. We've clipped the curb. And there's a very close call there from the Jack Goring. He might have uh, had to clench a little bit there, coming around the corner at speed. So Daniel Beards, then Ben Fichetti, Jack Gorin now back up into ninth. So 26 seconds left and uh, Brandon Hay is still walking away with this one. So over the line he goes and uh, that gap, 4.35 seconds for Callum Davies. Jack Maidman starting to catch up with Callum Davies just a little bit. Clock has ran out of time. So uh, we now go through what is the closing stages of this race now. So we go to the top bend, ready for another roll. And we'll go for the last lap for this race. So there we go, last lap, now out on the circuit. There you go, it's your second place man, Callum Davies, and then the pack that is behind Jack. So through the S's, that pack of three goes. Uh, down at the hairpin, uh, someone's buried themselves in the tires. Uh, it looks like that was Ben Fichetti. Daniel Beards is in the pits as well. We're down to eight drivers in total. But uh, meanwhile, taking the checkered flag will be that man, Brandon Haig. Followed by Callum Davies, 4.4 seconds later. Followed by Jack Maidman. Ben Page in fourth. George Walker fifth. Dan Burt sixth. Bit of a recovery drive for Jack up into seventh. And uh, coming down the main straight now is Alex Heron. That concludes that one. And a uh, bit of a action-packed one. But there we go. That is it for the Senior Rotax pre-final. And uh, we'll be back with the Senior Blues next. So one more to go on the pre-finals.
so here we go. The last pre-final of the day. It is the Senior Blues once again. So they all start coming out from the uh, track. Getting ready to go once more for another action-packed one. The number 14 just coming out onto your screen as well. Coming out onto the track. So let's get ready for another race from these Senior Blues and see how action-packed this one will be. Copyright, copyright, copyright. <laughs> it's music in the background. So let's get ready for the Senior Blues pre-final. As they start coming down the main straight now, let's get ready for this one as they come down the main straight. And it's green to go. Nine drivers. Who's going to be out in front at the end of this one as a whale of smoke comes down uh, the main straight past them. So down the back straight we go. Through the hairpin and around the horseshoe is the number one followed by five then 19 is that gonna change before they get to the main straight let's find out as uh, we get ready for the next flyby of this one so coming round it is Anthony Cleo followed by Paul Alexander Steve Groves in third Michael Bell in fourth uh, so we've also got a contact warning. Uh, Phil Shears up two positions on that one uh, in fifth, top five. So eight minutes to go. We're just getting started with the Senior Blues pre-final. And uh, there's still a lot more to come. So coming back to the top bend next. We'll go to the multicam view on the YouTube live stream. I am uh, quite enjoying using this one for some reason. Coming down, so it's uh, Anthony Cleo leading by 1.1 seconds, fastest lap time of a 36.25, which is currently the fastest of this race. Sylvia Vestia made up a position, uh, getting into seventh, and top of Chris Lord, who's down in eighth. Alex Kemp just at the back at the moment, behind the 69 of Chris Lord. So the first position is walking away a little bit. And uh, we have second, third and fourth all together as a little train. Let's uh, watch that fly on through the start finish as we go around the billies towards the S's and then down the back straights. And that gives us another go again. The number three right behind the number 19 of Steve Groves as they are going through the hairpin. And towards the horseshoe. And around we go. Three buttons. And then at the top bend once again. Chris Lord was in the pits a couple of laps ago, so we've down to eight drivers in this pre-final. So the number one just going around the horseshoe as the uh, rest of the pack start joining in. Part five leaving, uh, leading a pack of three and then behind that pack of three is another pack of, well it's a pack of two now. So down that they come for another radio of this circuit. Paul Alexander Got to find 2.98 seconds at the moment to Anthony Khalil if he wants to catch up. But it does have Steve Groves and Michael Bell right behind trying to catch for that. Those top positions, those top three. After what does, at the end of the day, work out 
who is on top on the pre-finals, uh, on the finals even. Uh, so we still got later on to discover what we're going to get from all of the classes here at Clay Pigeon and uh, who, what driver will be ahead. Uh, especially this being day one of the uh, Wessex Challenge, meaning this is only day one of two or four points to become the Wessex champion. And uh, something for the drivers to uh, take home. And uh, hopefully later on we will uh, try and live stream the trophy presentation over on the Clay Pigeon Raceway Instagram page. Uh, we'll try and do an Instagram live there uh, if I can. Obviously some of the trophy presentation does happen uh, when I'm not there. So we'll try our best and try and get a bit of it live streamed anyway. But uh, we shall see. Anyway, back to the action. Four minutes, 18 seconds left on the clock. Anthony Creel still leading by 4.4 seconds as he flies by. And uh, here comes the other three. Paul Alexander, Steve G and Michael B. That is the uh, top four at the moment. And uh, just keep an eye on them for the moment. Number three. We shall see how this one plays out very shortly with the uh, number three catching up to the back of uh, Mr. G, Steve Groves. And we go down the main street once again. Anthony Cleo just leading this one by a storm. I think he did this last time. 5.4 second lap uh, gap. Lap. <laughs> Lap a gap, there we go. Um, as we keep going through, 36.03 is the fastest lap time and it's been unbeaten still. That was only done a couple of laps ago. So, uh, keeping on going. Anthony Creel still leading by a country mile. Nearly six second gap, Paul Alexander just chilling in that second position at the moment. So we near the two and a half minute mark in over 10 seconds time. Makes total sense. Alex Kemp just chilling at the back at the moment. Uh, the number 64. Going through the S's right now and down the back straight. Uh, be on the top right camera that would have been. And your bottom right is your leader. So not much action happening from the, all of these. They're all sort of sticking out where they want to be at the moment. So we'll see how this one advances through. Meanwhile, we'll have the finals later on from all of the classes. The bigger grids are going to get exciting. And hopefully, for the Honda Cadet, so it won't be a featuring rabbit. That was pretty entertaining, I think. I think we're going to be having a Wessex Challenge Highlights video coming out at some point uh, over the next month. <laughs> so lap 12, and uh, still no action from the drivers. Uh, the number three just sticking on the back of Steve G as best as he can. Uh, hoping to catch him up as he backs out a little bit and looks like he's going into the pits or not It looks like he's cogged out uh, or he's uh, having an issue and not being able to get going But uh, that mixes up the order a little bit so uh, Steve Groves is uh, doesn't need to have too much pressure on him now As uh, Michael Bell unfortunately losing out quite a few positions there uh, due to an issue so hopefully that will be sorted for the final later on. Thirty seconds remaining, and uh, 
I think Mr. Bell is not going to be able to finish this one, or if he'll slowly finish it. We'll never know. Hopefully he'll be able to keep going. Meanwhile, 18 seconds left on the clock. Anthony Cleo leading by nearly 8 seconds. 7.9 seconds is the time. He's uh, absolutely cruised away with this one. He has uh, flown away from the beginning and uh, as we go to the top bend, we have no seconds left on the clock. So let's get ready for this one as uh, we have our last couple of, well, the last lap uh, of this pre-final. So going through the S's and down the back straight goes our leader. He's had a fairly dominant day today. So uh, we'll see how he does later on. Michael Bell getting out of the way uh, quite nicely there, uh, going through uh, the horseshoe. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, coming down the main street now, taking the checkered flag, it is going to be that man there. Anthony Cleal takes the checkered flag for the pre-final for the Senior Blues. And then we have Paul Alexander taking second. Steve Groves takes third. And that rounds out your top three for the pre-final for the Senior Blues. So that's it. That's all the pre-finals done, dusted, and out of the way. And uh, there's a bit of time before we get into the grand finals of day one of the West's Challenge. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a lot of stuff going on. 12 minutes for these uh, grand finals. We'll see you all very shortly. There is going to be a short break here. So we'll see you all soon for the grand finals.
How was yours was it taken? Guess I needed a home. But if I'm not mistaken, you were good on your own. Oh, and I know, I know I was drunk enough. Didn't know, didn't know it would mess me up, yeah. Now I'm truly awakened, uh. So you want to talk again? But it's time I do this my way.
T minus two minutes till we get going again. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we are nearly there. There's nearly time for the finals. Good old copyright music in the background. We're gonna get started soon. It's gonna be good. Oh, they're gonna answer our first. I don't know why I'm getting so excited. <laughs> I know why indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a roar. There is many cadets flying onto the grid. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the finals here at Clay Pigeon Raceway. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's get this one underway. It's a lovely day, and we're for the finals for day one of the Wessex Challenge. So let's get the Honda Cadets final. It's starting soon. Really, really soon. Like in a minute. <laughs> As the uh, helicopter flies on by. We gotta get this show on the road. So coming down the top bend, down the main straight. Ladies and gentlemen, let's kick start the finals off. Day one of the West's challenge. Let's go for the Honda Cadets. So, going towards the top bend. Uh, top bend bellies, there we go. It's been lunch, you can tell my brain's been on the rest. Through the S's and down the back straight, that's Max Lovell by the looks of it. Leading a double charging Fairclough Sisters. Going around the hairpin towards the horseshoe. On the horseshoe we go, and then through buttons. Let's get you updated order. Better flare off already on the back end of Max Level. Let's get this one underway. Let's see who is where in this list. So, let's kick it off. 
Max Lovell followed by Bella Fairclough, then her sister Alice Fairclough in third position. And a little bit back is Jaden Mead, then Ava Morris. Jensen Walker in sixth, Conrad Barton seventh, Marley Fisher in eighth, Charlie White ninth, and Luke McGowell at the back in tenth position. Bella Fairclough already looking at some potential moves on Max Lovell that is in front of her. Going around the horseshoe, bumper to bumper. Bella has had a strong day today. As we go back around once more. Up to the top, Ben Bella down the inside, taking that first position. We're back with the Fairclough sisters sandwich again. Max Lovell right in the middle of it as we go down the back straight again. Coming towards the hairpin. Ava Morris making a position up that last lap. Alice Fairclough having a look on Max Lovell as well. Behind her, Ava Morris sits in prey. So going around at the top bend, down the main straight once again. Let's get your updated order as we get another flyby. Max Lovell down the inside. Max Lovell's back ahead of Bella Fairclough. Through the S's and down the back straight. And uh, the number, 60, uh, number 63 trying to stay behind Max as long as possible. Around the horseshoe we go. The number 30 is sticking on the back of her sister in front. And then going towards the top bend and down the main straight. Are we going to see any changes between these drivers here on the circuit? Don't forget these are about 12 minutes long. Alice Fairclough at threat with Ava Morris. Defending that inside line to keep Ava Morris behind and as such is still as we go down the back straight towards the hairpin going around the hairpin now Jaden Mead making a position up that last lap he is the fastest cadet out there at the moment better Fairclough given a contact warning so going through the top bend and down the main straight Around Billy's we go. Eva Morris down the inside of Alice Fairclough just before the entrance of the S's. And as we go down the back straight, Ava is up into third. Alice at threat again with another driver. A little bit of contact made by the two of them. So they're both battling to keep on track. So, going back to the top slots, it looks like Bella Fairclough's back in the lead. Coming down the main street once more. Bella Fairclough followed by Max Lovell, then Ava Morris, Alice Fairclough down into fifth position. But we see her bounce back a bit later on. We still have plenty of time, over seven and a half minutes left on this clock. And the front three are in a train of three. Going around the hairpin and... Travelling back round to the horseshoe. So Bella still defending off at the top. Coming down the main straight. We go once again. For another flyby from these drivers. Max Lovell looking down the inside. Will Bella be able to defend this one off? She does. Max Lovell's on the outside. Ava Morris down the inside. And staying there and managing to sneak past up into second position. Alice Fairclough starting to catch up to Jaden Mead, who is in fourth position at the moment. Alice using the inside lines, trying to see if she can sneak ahead. Whilst at the same time, trying to not make herself vulnerable to overtakes from behind. As uh, we keep going round back to the top bend, where we have our leader at battle with. Max Lovell again looking for another move this time on Ava Morris. Ava just managing to stay out ahead as we go into Billy's. Will Max look down the inside and once more he does 
and takes the inside line. Fair Diaz is getting up into second. Meanwhile, as Fairclass right on the rear end of the driver in front. She looks down the inside line. She doesn't manage to get too far ahead this time. That's a spot she likes to do uh, throughout today. A very competitive bunch here. We're just dipped under six minutes left on the clock. We're just under half, uh, just over halfway. Better Fairclough still in the lead at the moment. The max level up into second, and uh, Ava Morris in the third. That's Fairclough defending off and trying to attack for uh, the appropriate places. Attacking for that fourth and uh, defending for the sixth. Conrad Barton just at the back of that pack. All right, with Marley Fisher behind. A lot of switch moves going on here. Down the inside goes the night. Uh, I think that was the 13. I'll have to double check on that one as uh, we keep coming round. So top bend. And uh, most of the cadet pack is together as we're coming down the main straight. There's a flyby of cadets once more. Better Faircraft still in the lead, but has a charging max level right behind her. Alice Faircraft made a move up and is up one position. She's now in fourth. So we'll see I'm being able to catch back up into the, the top three. We'll see very shortly going around the horseshoe towards Buttons at the back. Charlie White and Luke McGall having a little bit of a race of their own. Number 15 ahead of the 47. Meanwhile, we'll come back to our leaders. Max Lovell right behind Bella Fairclough now. As we go through Billy's. Through towards the S's. And down the back straight we go. Alice Fairclough catching the back of Ava Morris. Ava Morris really trying to keep on the tail end of Max Lovell as well. I don't think you can even put a fingernail between Bella Fairclough and Max Lovell out there. Alice going around the inside line of Ava and getting up into third. It's back with the Fairclough sisters sandwich. So top bend and down the main straight once again. Let's get the flyby. Max Lovell's really looking for a position to try and squeeze ahead. So we're going around Billy's. Ava Morris down the inside of Alice Fairclough. And they switch back positions once again. Three minutes 20 left on the clock in about now. And uh, that is still just defending off Max Lovell as we are going by for all the corners once again. Alice Fairclough looking down the inside, going at the top bend. Will she be able to stay ahead as we go round? And she does indeed. Back for another flyby. Max Lovell's really just sticking up the back of Bella Fairclough. Ava Morris down the inside once more. The two girls switch in positions. Alice gets the inside line as we go towards the S's. And once again, the switcheroo. Alice is back in front. Ava looking for another move again behind her. Uh, there was another move by a couple of drivers switching back uh, in that pack. Uh, that was 29 of Jaden Mead. Just trying to stay with the rest of the pack. Like I said earlier, the 15 and 47 just having a little bit of a race of their own. Back with the flyby. Max Lovells really just wants to stay behind at the moment. Playing it out. Two minutes 13 on the clock. Ava Morris back down the inside of Alice Fairclough at the S's once again. And uh, another driver also getting involved. Jaden Mead trying to get involved in their little battle. So uh, tap. Have a little zap. And uh, we still keep going. Better Fair Club still comfortably ahead from the moment. But back for yet another flyby. You, like I said earlier, you can't even stick a fingernail in that gap. At some points with the those two leaders. As Fairclough with somebody down the inside, but managing to defend it off nicely, coming out on the exit of there. Jaden Mead just trying his best to 
try and get ahead of the cart in front. Max Love will just stick in behind for now, just trying to try and find a different line to get ahead. Alice Fairclough back at the top end once again. Uh, this time not being able to make the move. Uh, instead, they're side by side this time. And uh, Alice still on the inside line going into Billy's. They're side by side going round. And Alice getting the better line there. A little bit of touch in between 32 and 29. Uh, Jaden Mead trying to get involved in that battle. Not sure if that worked out too well. That has produced a little gap between Alice Fairclough and the drivers behind. So we'll get that updated order very shortly. We have 23 seconds left on the clock. This timer is just ticking down and going like crazy. So down we go. Bella still ahead of Max Lovell. Through the S as we go. And uh, back straight next. Through the hairpin. And uh, towards the horseshoe. Bella Fairclough still ahead. Alice Fairclough still has that bit of a gap. Uh, due to that incident in the S is not long ago. So we'll get your updated running order very shortly as they come down the main straight once again. And uh, the last lap board is ready and it's out. The final lap. Max Lovell already trying to make some moves. Trying to find a different line. Is it going to work out through the S's? Down the back straight we go. Max Lovell trying for the inside line. Bella Flecklough defending it. Horseshoe. Alice Fairclough still with a little gap behind. Through buttons. Now it's time for the top bend. And we come to the end of this final. Down the main straight. Max Lovell still behind. Ladies and gentlemen, it was very close between the two. But Bella Fairclough takes a checkered flag for the grand final of today. Max Lovell takes second. And then Alice Fairclough taking third position today. A top three Fairclough sisters sandwich. But there we go. That is your top three. Bella Fairclough, Max Lovell, Alice Fairclough. Conrad Barton came out in fourth on that one. Ava Morrison fifth. Jaden Mead sixth. Jensen Walker seventh. Marley Fisher eighth. Luke McGall ninth. And then Charlie White rounds out the top ten in that one. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That is the final done for the Honda Cadets for day one of the Wessex Challenge. And that is only just the beginning of the finals. So let's get straight back to the action with the Minimax final. This one could get quite interesting between some of these drivers. Let's see what the Minimaxes can do for us and... Uh, what are we going to expect from them? Trisha Berry on the uh, YouTube channel said, Excellent racing, Bella and Alice. Uh, Grammy, very proud. Lovely little message there. But we get back to the action for the Minimax final as they come on flying on down and uh it has been full started and a lot of oh someone spun i think to a couple have mounted one another there i think that was just a call out on that one 73 with a bent axle where the looks of it that's a very wobbly shaky cart So uh, we're going to restart this one, I think. I think it might take a couple of goes.
Right. We are going back round once more. Not quite sure what happened at the, after that full stop, but... As we slow everyone up once more, we'll go for this next time round. So, let's get this final underway, hopefully, as we go towards the top bend. Let's try again, shall we, ladies and gents? Coming down the main straight now. Let's see if we can get this one underway. And we are underway. So, going up into Billy's now. Are we going to see anybody actually make the corner? I mean, everybody has made it so far through the S's and down the back straight. It's the number 19, followed by the 45. Lucas Howell ahead of Joshua Withcombe. So around the top, Ben, let's get the order updated for you on the YouTube live stream and to your eardrums. So it's Lucas Howell, followed by Joshua Withcomb, then Kai V, then Jack West, then Joshua V, then Freddie Baker, then Danny Newman. Someone has spun at Billy, so that could be changed already. But uh, let's see what we get from our front runners now as we focus on them for the next 11 or so minutes. Number 75 catching the rear of Joshua Withcomb. As we come back round for another go. Contact one and given to Emily Cotty uh, down in that 13th position. She goes around Billy's. Meanwhile, the front three, more like front four, uh, coming around the horseshoe next. Lucas Howell just sticking as ahead as best he can. Through the S's we go for Lucas Howell, Joshua Withcombe and Kai V. Uh, they're all just sticking it out towards one another at the moment. Just uh, staying where they can. around the horseshoe and uh, then towards the top uh, three buttons and then towards the top bend we still got no movement from the three there as uh, we go once again down the main straight for another lap of play pigeon with this mini max final going down the back straight the number 75 catching on the back end of 45 Little bits of gaps being created between the two drivers. 75 real close now as we go through buttons and towards the top bend. Down the main straight we go. And uh, no movement between the two drivers just yet as we're going around Billy's down the S's, uh, down the S's and uh, through the back straight. There we go. We'll do it that way. So we're going back to the multicam view for this final. As we go down the main straight once again, there is a bit of a gap between the two. Through the S's, once again, that top three is still unmoved. The number 92 trying to 
gain in this lot as well. Jack West in fourth. Jared Metters is down in ninth. Uh, when I say down in ninth, he's made up a position into ninth. So top bend and uh, still no movement from these drivers just yet. So fly around for another go at the circle. We've still got over seven and a half minutes to go. These drivers doing the best that he can so far. There's not much movement, like I've been saying, between the top four. They all, they all bunch up at uh, Billy's, and the S is the number 92, having a lock of a lot, a lot of lock on. There we go. I produced my own tongue twister there. As uh, we. Uh, as he came out the S's. Yeah, another spin there down at Billy's. I think that's by uh, Charlie Parker in the number 48. And uh, indeed, that is true. Coming once again. Let's have a flyby. Top four starting to catch up with one of the bat markers out there, uh, which is the number 99. So going towards the top bend and uh, down the main straight. So like I've been saying, there's not been not much movement from these top few. Uh, meanwhile, there is a Potential going through Billy's and uh, through the S's of uh, cars 18 and 42. Uh, but it is all eyes on that front four for this final. And uh, they're all just waiting it out for the timer to tick down. As uh, we do get closer to one of the back markers. Oh, we passed one of the back markers. So there we go. That turn out of the way quite nicely then. So Lucas Howe still leading at the moment. Jack West has the fastest lap time out there on the circuit of a 36.08. And uh, is catching at the moment. He's on the back end of Kai V in that third position. Starting to find some pace out of that cart and uh, seeing if he can uh, go ahead and uh, claim the top three. Lucas Howe still ahead. Still unchanged from those ones. Lucas Howe and Kai V both improving their fastest lap time out there. Uh, Lucas trying to make a gap, uh, the gap a bit bigger. Uh, but yet still these four just basically following one another. Three minutes 40 left on the clock. down the main straight and uh, Lucas Howe splitting away from the other three down the back straight we are once more and uh, the number 75 looking quite speedy back down there
Oh, so they start splitting away from one another now. Fourth, Jack West trying to look down the inside. Tries to, a little bit of uh, contact made between the front bumpers and the rear bumpers. <laughs> Uh, not being able to stick it out. Blue flags being waved for one of the back markers, the number 14 of Emily Cotty. As we fly round for another go. So, around. We go through the S's and down the back straights. The number 19 still leading Joshua Withcombe. Kai V in third. Jack West still in fourth position at the moment. Joshua B in fifth. Freddie Baker in sixth. Danny Newman seventh. Harry Cottrell is down in eighth position. Jerick Metters in ninth. Ethan Carney in tenth. Charlie Parker outside the top ten in eleventh. Emily Cotty in 12th and then Zach Turner in 13th out of 13 drivers. Blue flags being waved for the number 14 of Emily Cotty as uh, the front of the pack has started to catch her up now. For Lucas Howell right behind her now as we go through the horseshoe and uh, towards the top bend now. Just gets a flyby as a uh, pass. The front blue flags waved for the number 14 once again. So round through the S's and down the back straight. All the carts managing to get past quite nicely. Lucas Howe with a little bit of a gap now. Jack West with a 35.93 is the fastest lap time out there on the circuit. Finding some pace out of that car of his as uh, we lead down the last 30 seconds of this final. So, not long to go before we reach the closing stages of, of this final from the Mini Maxes. 16 seconds left on the clock. What will we get from the drivers in the, these closing stages coming down the main straight in a few seconds time as uh, we get ready for the last lap. So through the S's down the back straight. Lucas Howe still leading it. Most of the order has been unchanged for like last this, that last half of this race. They've all just been chilling out in their positions. So going through buttons towards the top bend, and we'll get ready. Get ready. Get ready to say it is Lucas Howe taking the checker flag, followed by Joshua Withcombe. Then. Kai V taking the third position. That is the top three. What a race that was. Not a lot of change between uh, the drivers out there. They're all sort of sticking behind one another, chilling out. Uh, and as such, there is your order there for yourselves. I'll use the other one. Uh, there's your order for yourselves uh, on the YouTube live stream. But there we go. That is the end for the Mini Max's final here at Clay Pigeon Raceway. Not many finals to go. We're two in. Let's see how the rest of today goes. I need a fan up in here. <laughs> so it's time for the next race. It's the Junior Rotax final.
Let's see what we get from these 20 drivers out here on the track today. So coming towards the top end. Let's see. As they start flying down the main straight. And we are going for this final first time. So through, through Billy's. Through the S's and down the back straight. The number 19 of Finn Smith ahead at the moment. Around the hairpin and now through to the horse units. The number 19 and the 71 of Leo Purchase. I feel like I'm not mentioning him at all really today. As we get a flyby as they come, start coming round, we'll get you your order. So Finn Smith followed by Leo Purchase and Benjamin Bartlett. Charles Green, then Daniel Tri, that is your top five, and they're skating away from the rest of the pack already as they can fly down the back straight. Already starting this one high with a pack of five and a pack of three. Number 19 with a little bit of a gap to Leo Purges. So, coming around and down the main straight now. This is where... We might see a few changes from these drivers. Number 77 was potentially looking to go down the inside, but did not. Decided to back out and wait on that one. There's plenty of time to go. We've got 10 and a half minutes. Plenty of, plenty of time. 14 making a move up into uh, on the 41. So coming back down the main straight once more. Finn Smith and Leo Perch are sort of getting away now from the third downwards. They uh, split off away from the rest of the pack. Through the S as they go and down the back straight to 77, holding off to 44. Spin down at Billy's by one of the drivers. Uh, that was the number 21, was chilling in 13, Samuel Wyatt. But at the moment, it is Finn Smith and Leo Purchase who are storming away from the pack for now. The train for third is six people long. 77 and 44. The number 44, Benjamin Bartlett, really trying to make a move. Trying to gain some position somewhere. Contact warning just given to Archie Buttle as we go around the top bend and down the main straight once again. Look at that train of six. Splitting off a little bit from one another, but uh, we'll see what happens. As uh, down the inside goes the orange cart of the E plate. That is Reza, Reza S. Making up a few positions there. Trying to gain up the order. And uh, now catch, trying to catch up with the other one. Uh, down at the SS2 together in the tie wall. Trying to get it going. Trying to push their cards back up and going again. We'll focus on our top few and then we'll get back around there once again. As uh, it looks like they've both been able to get going once again. So the wall gets repaired and uh, we will move on for another go. The 41 down the inside of the 22. 22 still on the outside but didn't get a really good exit on that corner. Finn 
Finn Smith followed by Leo Purchase, Benjamin Bartlett, Daniel Tribe up into fourth position with uh, Charles Green down in fifth. The Reza C with an in sixth E plate. So, seven plus minutes left on the clock. Still got loads of time left to go. Finn Smith still leading by under a second at the moment. Daniel Tribe of 3478 is the fastest lap time out there as uh, they are charging through the through the circuit. Attempt down the inside by the E plate on the 77 using a lot of curb and uh, just haven't stuck out just yet. Having to open up some more windows in here. I made a mistake wearing jeans. So just over five and a half minutes left on this one. Well, Reza S making up a position that lap, and so does Harry Maynard down in seventh. Another move down the inside, a double move down the inside on the 77 by uh, the number 93 and 74. So coming down the main straight now is Lee, uh, Finn Smith followed by Leo Purchase, then Benjamin Bartlett, then Daniel Tribe. He still has a fast lap time out there at the moment. Still unchanged by most of the uh, pack at the moment. It's uh, 19 just flying away at the moment coming down the main street now lost one driver so far in this one that was Archie Buttle yeah, lost him quite a while ago And a little bit of a pile up down at Billy. Two of the drivers tie one up in the air a bit. Uh, not sure which two of the drivers they are. Just at the moment, we will uh, wait for the moment as uh, we'll just switch to Oscam for the minute. And uh, we'll get eyes on the two drivers that were involved in that one that was Archie Lyons and Curtis Latimer I think potentially unsure at the moment just waiting for uh, both drivers are out so it's just a car stuck in the tie wall at the moment so Finn Smith followed by yeah, Archie Lyons and Curtis Slatterer, unfortunately, were the ones involved in that one. Alexander Senna, I think, was, might have been involved as he's a lap down. Uh, less than three minutes on the clock. And uh, we will be able to get going. Back with the action. 
uh, on the top bend. So, coming down the main straight now is Finn Smith. He's uh, been leading this one comfortably from the beginning, uh, followed by Leah Purge, who's been comfortably in second this whole time. Fast lap. Still was stuck with Daniel Tribe. Harry Maynard made a position up that last lap as well. Uh, whilst we look through the order. Two minutes to go. Finn Smith leading by 2.59 seconds at the moment and uh, I think Benjamin Bartlett is starting to catch up with Leo Purchase. There's not a lot of time left to go and uh, Finn has really put his foot down now. Number 44 catching up. Benjamin Bartlett has been stuck in third for, uh, from the first couple of laps and uh, and as such, it's just patiently waiting for a moment. switching over through the different camera angles. We have been live all day on the YouTube channel. So if you do want to watch all of this back, then feel free to. That's uh, quite a list of it. They're trying to get one of the drivers back up and running again. Six, 15 seconds left as uh, we fly on through very slowly through to the end of this race. So going for the top end then. So Last lap board given out to Finn Smith. As he goes through the S's, his gap is 3.68 seconds. He's led this one from the very first couple of corners of this final here for the Junior Road Tax. As we go around the horseshoe, through buttons and towards the top bend. And now we'll be coming down at the main straight for the checkered flag. Ladies and gentlemen, Finn Smith takes the checkered flag for the Junior Rotax follow, uh, final, followed by Leo Purchase. Then Benjamin Bartlett will take out for the top three during this final. I'm going to leg it for a drink.
Fanta required. Let's get for the Junior Blues final, just in time. So here we, so here we go for the Junior Blue final. As uh, we get underway with the five drivers that have been uh, competing today. Let's see which ones will be out ahead. It's one followed by two, followed by four, followed by 66 and six. Will the number 66 be able to finish today's race? So let's get your order updated as they come flying on three and it is Sam Mitchell followed by Reese Reed then we got Jamie Bradfield in third Jamie Dart in fourth and then Rudy Winslow Morton at the back in fifth position as the top five and only five Katie Dot, who will get the toilet plate? Oh god. <laughs> the WC. Funnily enough, if you haven't checked out the Clay Pigeon Cart Club's um, Facebook page, you'll actually see what is up for grabs. Um, there's lovely trophies and then there is a certain object <laughs> uh, that has been decorated in a certain way. <laughs> um, yes, it's... Uh, it is, it's a toilet brush, smothered in quotation marks, poo, uh, but I can confirm it's not going to be that thing, because otherwise that would be really disgusting. <laughs> but they look used. So there is a nice, uh, a nice toilet brush up for crabs. You have to see the picture on the Kirk Club, uh, Kirk Club Facebook page, it's absolutely brilliant. So for the mid-race updates, uh, Sam Mitchell is in first at the moment. 
Uh, it is a train of three uh, between Sam Mitchell, Reese Reed, and Jamie Bradfield. Uh, they've been stuck behind one another for the last three uh, or so laps. Where are we are seven minutes uh, remaining in this one. Um, unfortunately, my. <laughs> I need to rest my throat just a tiny bit because uh, I've got another day of uh, commentating tomorrow, and uh, I don't want to. I don't want to sound like this tomorrow. <laughs> um, so should be all alright tomorrow, but uh, just precautionary whilst uh, we'll just chill and uh, see what is going on. So those who are watching at home. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Let us know uh, if you have or not. And uh, hit that like button as well. Let me know if you're here too. It's great to have a chat with a couple of you. It's been uh, a bit quiet in the YouTube chat today. But uh, we've got a lot to go on with this weekend. It is uh, a very busy one indeed. So we shall see how it goes those those three are probably going for it between the three of them as uh, they go through the S's and down the back straight uh, once again Sixty-six. Uh, making a bit of a uh, mistake off-screen, just where the uh, running order is. So now that we are near enough, getting halfway through this race, we'll give you your order update for this one. As I uh, flick back to the right screen that I need to use, I say Sam Mitchell still ahead in that pack of three, uh, going through the S's and down the back straight. Uh, Reese Reed in second, and Jamie Bradfield in third. Uh, these three have been uh, together for the last couple of laps just uh, as we watch them go by uh, just to monitor what they were up to and uh, see how they're going. Uh, Jamie Dart's in a world of his own and so is Rudy Winslow Morton uh, going through the S's at the moment. Um, but uh, it's the front three that are really doing it. Uh, the camera on the gantry is falling. <laughs> Oh no, it's drunk. I think I think the cable tie. <laughs> it was only secured by cable ties, but I think it's just uh, tipped over in the lunch break. Oh, that's annoying, isn't it? Well. Uh, as we're going on the number two there just slowed down and has now stopped out there on the circuit just uh, down the back straight it's real unfortunate was in second position fighting for a really good position there unfortunately not being able to get it going again uh, which is a really really big shame there Hopefully they'll be able to get that source. <laughs> well, I wonder if they'll be able to get it going, but unfortunately that looks like the end of uh, Reese Reed's final there, uh, which is a real shame.
motivation make my life vacation when we are together i surrender right into you i get all tongue tied want you to know me but i'm way too shy i can't just go around admitting that it's you i like i wish that i had guts enough to flirt a little but i'm too scared of truth well, i fixed it <laughs> it's not exactly the same as it was but uh i had to quickly fix that camera for the other finals later uh but sam mitchell followed by jamie bradfield then jamie dart then really wins morton and then we lost reese reed on that one god i'm unhealthy <laughs> So next up is the 177 Rotax final. Five drivers once again, 12 minutes on the clock. What are we going to get from these five? And he's going to fly away with this one. Let's let's get going for this final say come flying on three. Only five drivers once again. Going through Billy's. And uh, down the back straight, the number seven making up a position already. Might be two. 
And it is too as we go through the hairpin and down towards the horseshoe. Uh, the order being the 72, then the 46. So Harrison Crook followed by Ian Brownfield, then Philip Howard. Nathan Wells in fourth, and then Harry Rowett will be taking the top five for these drivers here. Hopefully we'll see a few more tomorrow. So don't forget the uh, most challenge is two days long. Um, so two days of uh, non-stop action here at the circuit. So today being the first day and then tomorrow will be round four and uh, the points you get tomorrow will be added on to today's points as well, uh, providing you with uh, two sets of points. On to uh, produce our Wessex champion. as they go through the S's and down the back of straights uh, to five drivers doing some good stuff there there's a little battle going on between Ian Branfield and Philip Howworth let's go around the horseshoe and uh, three buttons and once again uh, the fixed camera angle on the top left it is only held on by two cable ties at the cross so Not much difference between those ones. So, 8 minutes, 26 left on the clock. Harrison Crook still leading the way at the moment uh, with Philip Howarth in second position. Ian Brownfield uh, currently in third and uh, Nathan Wells in fourth. Uh, Philip, Ian and Nathan are all in a uh, group of three for now whilst uh, they try and attempt to battle it out between one another. It's uh, not much happening at the moment most of the moves made earlier in the race still a lot of time left to go and uh, those three only the ones that are closer together Ian Branfield trying to catch up with Philip Howworth and uh, has done going into the yeses there and has uh, made a position up number seven looking to bounce back straight away eager to get back again Nathan Wells also looking to be invited into this little battle that they've got going on. As they come down the main straight. And uh, through to Billy's. Harry Rowett starting to join into this as well, slowly catching up with the rest of the pack. That, uh, is chilling there. Harrison Crook leading by 3.13 seconds with a uh, lap time of a 35.33. Uh, which he uh, did on his last lap as well.
We shall see what these drivers get up to in a few moments' time. As uh, Philip Howarth starting to catch up with the number 46 once again. We'll give it a couple laps and see what occurs. Starting to catch up now. Slowly catching up with the, the number 46 once again. So, with a couple of laps passed, just over four and a half minutes left, mate. Philip Howard starting to catch up with Ian Branfield out there out on the circuit. That gap is closing, uh, was closing each lap. Uh, the gap between uh, Ian Bramford and Harrison Crook is over four seconds. And uh, also the other two, Nathan Wells and Harry Rowett, starting to get the same distance to the other two out there as well. Uh, so it's slowly starting to form into two different races for two different reasons. Uh, one's for a bigger trophy and uh, the other one is uh, just for position so going down the main straight is your leader at the moment which is Harrison Crook and then here comes your second and third and thir uh, fourth and fifth Sega will go through the S's in their pairs. The uh, 28 getting ahead of Nathan Wells there. Uh, just, um, just before the S's. As it is uh, all starting to mix up with uh, just over three minutes left on the clock. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed yet on the YouTube channel, please hit that subscribe button and uh, be a part of the live streams. Got lots of live streams to go, lots more left, including a couple more events in the near but far future. And then you can also be notified of when these live streams go live if you do hit that notification bell on the YouTube channel. It'll be most appreciated. And uh, hopefully, we'll see more of you tuning in and joining in the conversation uh, tomorrow and in the near future as well. It's always welcome.
So just over a minute to go now as uh, we come to the closing stages of the 177 and 177 Masters final here. Only f five drivers out on the circuit, but uh, that has not disappointed in what we've had action-wise. Philip Hanworth getting a strong start with uh, Ian Branfield also trying to battle against them. Um, Ian Branfield still ahead of Philip Howarth at the moment. And uh, Harry Rowett falling quite far behind but finding some pace in the last half of this race. Uh, don't forget that we are using the Maxis Sports. Um, but it is the number 72 of Harrison Crook who has led this one from near enough the beginning. Has the fastest lap time, 35.27. As we have eight seconds left on the clock, stretching out a uh, final lap in this uh, race, an extra lap. And uh, we'll soon be getting closer to the bigger grid finals. Two to go. And then that will be all from the Western Challenge today. Don't forget two days worth of action. So we're on the last lap, and uh, there's the number 72 that we'll take it at the moment. It's going to be either the 46 or 7 that might be taken second. Uh, it is a battle now between those two. And we'll uh, keep an eye on them as they uh, fly through the list. The track even. <laughs> so around the horseshoe they go. Meanwhile at the top. Leading by over six seconds. Taking the checkered flag is Harrison Crook. And then it will be Ian Branfield who takes second position with Philip Howarth in the third. Harry Rowett will take fourth and then Nathan Wells taking the fifth position. That is your top five and only five for this race and uh, we'll see the action from them again tomorrow just like all the other classes as well two days of non-stop action Not much action from them, but we uh, have the senior road taxes next and uh, see what happens. See how this one turns out, shall we? So here we go now. Time to roll in at the bigger grids. Senior road tax. And. Uh, What are we going to get from these drivers out here on the circuit? So as they start getting ready to come around and start off this final. Get ready ladies and gents because this one is going to be a ride indeed. And uh, it looks like the 95 might not be able to get going. He's uh, not sure if he's had an issue there. So we will be going back round again. Ninety five for some reason not being able to get going. As it is uh Smoking away there, just at the uh, exit of the horseshoe. Obviously, that was Callum Davies, who's had uh, quite a strong day today, and uh, the car's just not kept in for this final. 
wonder if he'll be able to get it going again. As uh, we are going back round for one more. So for some reason it doesn't look like it wants to go. They're really trying to get that cart back up and running again. He really wants to do this final. But uh, it looks like this time is now. So top bend and we'll get this final underway for the senior road tax as they get slowed up once more. Let's get ready for the senior road tax final. He's going to end out in front of the list on this one. Uh, the car at the back using a lot of grass to uh, stay going. Let's take out was a 39 of George Walker. He's uh, managed to sneak out ahead of the pack. So going through around the horseshoe. It's the 39, then 18, then 15. Jack Gorin, Dan Burt, and uh, George Walker in reverse order. So let's get the running order up on the screen, ready to go as we get your order for you all. So, George Walker followed by Dan Burt, then Jack Gorin, then Ben Page. Cameron Crockett makes up a position from the beginning. It's uh, a bit of a squash out there near the back for uh, the number 62 there. Uh, but the one needing it is uh, George Walker. So coming down the main straight now. Number 18 still ahead of the 15. We'll go around again. Jack Boren taking a bit of a uh, different line. Number 90, Ben Page, sticking behind in fourth position at the moment. Jack Gorin down the inside. Getting ahead of the number 18, up into second position now. And uh, his next target is going to be the top one. We've got a few contact warnings given. Two to Ben Forgetti and one to, Flint, uh, to Finn uh, Whaley down near the back of the grid. So Jack Gorin up into second. He has a bit of a gap now. Has uh, a couple more drivers looking to take that spot a little bit. Wobbly there, the number 88 taking a really big dive there, uh, making the number 90 a little bit twitchy. Uh, he has lost a few positions to that. Number 90 down the inside to take a third position from Dan Burt in the number 18. We'll get an updated order on a flyby in just a second as they come down the main straight. George Walker is still there, Cameron Crockett giving a contact warning. Rightfully so, to go through the S's down the back straight. Coming back round again. 38 still ahead at the moment. Jack Gorin trying to close that gap up. Ben Page still in third at the moment. The uh, timing screen slowly update. Going down the back straight, the 18 defending off the number 88. Let's take the multicam view on the YouTube live stream for a little while. The number 15 catching up with the 39. Meanwhile, behind the front two is the position of the third battle. And uh, the num number 20 just steaming on past. Brandon Hague right past the number 90 of Ben Page. As we go down the back straight for our leaders as well. George Walker still leading by a little margin, number 15 behind. 
Number 88 is ahead of the 62 and 17, Ben Fricchetti and Jack Maidman. Seven and a half minutes to go on this final. And uh, seniors chilling out for just a moment. Jack Goring just trying to catch up as best he can in this final. As he's uh, looking behind him. Jack, there's nobody behind you. Uh, the number 20, though, is uh, a little bit further back than Jack. We go through the S's and down the back straight. The 15 closing on the 39 as they go down the back straight. Jack had a lot of pace going around there. Through around the horseshoe and trying to gain, uh, get, gain back. Because I can uh, hardly speak. Must be the end of the day. Little spin by uh, one of the drivers down at the hairpin. Unable to keep going, unfortunately. Uh, we'll get that one to you in a moment. And that looks like it's Jack Maven. It's the one that's... Uh, Unfortunately, not been able to keep going. And it uh, looks like he might be able to try and get it going again. But back towards the horseshoe is where the action's at. And Jack Gorin with a little bit of a deeper line. I want to say deeper, a bit more of an inwards line than uh, the driver in front. Will he be able to claim this top position? There's over six minutes to go. See what they get. They're going into Billy. Trying to try to make a move down the inside. Unfortunately, it was blocked off by the 39. Going around once more through the around the hairpin towards the horseshoe. 15. Now being held up by the 39 by the looks of it. But the uh, pace of the driver behind Brandon Haig is catching the two. Lap by lap. So let's see how this one will work out. Ben Page uh, with a little bit of a gap between the man in front and behind him. So a little bit of a comfortable fourth position at the moment. As uh, we go towards and round the hairpin. Back towards the horseshoe. Still in a train of three at the moment. Down the inside goes the number... 20, unfortunately, didn't really work out. So it was blocked out by Jack Goring, mainly due to the width of the truck at that point. The top three still together. Over four and a half minutes to go yet. Still all change. And number 20 right behind Jack in the second position at the moment. Down the inside he goes through the S's. And uh, Jack now down into third position. Brandon Haig up into second and uh, charging towards that 39. Around the buttons towards the top bend. And we go again. The 39 just holding on to this first place as best he can. The number 20 is just staying behind. All over the rear end. And uh, is Jack going to be waiting for an opportunity down in that third position slot there? Cameron Crockett and Ben Fichetti going around at the hairpin and uh, through the horseshoe and buttons even. I'll get the names right someday. Jack slightly back from the front two. 
Number 20 ahead of the 39 now. Will Jack Gorin be able to get ahead of the number 15? George Walker could absolutely fly now with uh, that 39 out of the way. Jack Gorin is on the back of George Walker. Not being able to make a move just yet. Two and a half minutes to go. And uh, that random noise in the background was the uh, sound of a Rotax firing up without an exhaust. Jaguarin still in third position, trying to get past the number 39. Just not being able to find a gap just yet to squeeze past. As uh, they start going towards the top bend and down the main straight now. Give you an updated running order. Brandon Haig followed by George Walker, followed by Jack Goring. He's trying to look and move down the inside. Ben Page in fourth, with Cameron Crockett in fifth, with Ben uh, Ben Fichetti in, in sixth, Alex Heron, uh, Alex, uh, Alex Heron in seventh. I was using his uh, initials the wrong way around. Uh, Daniel Beards in eighth, Flynn Weasley in ninth, Jack Mabin down in tenth, and then we've uh, lost Dan Burton in this one uh, before it even begun. Jack still not passed. The number two just yet, it's just still hanging behind. 44 seconds to go. Not a lot of time here. Jack looking down the inside, a bit of a jump behind. As we go around the horseshoe, around towards the top bend now. And uh, we go back down for 20 seconds left on the clock. Around Billy's. And through the S's, will Jack be able to catch up with the first position man or will George Walker be able to re-overtake? We shall never know and we shall find out within the next few laps or so. So, the number 20 taking the last lap board now. The final lap to do it. Brandon Haig has had this one for a few laps and has uh, worked his way through the order to uh, come and take the checkered flag. For this one, he's going around the horseshoe towards Buttons and uh, towards the top bend now. And we'll get your uh, final, final few as he comes down the main straight now and taking the win for the Senior Road Tax final. It is going to be Brandon Haig, followed by Jack Gorin. Then uh, George Walker will take third. Ben Page fourth, Cameron Crockett fifth, Ben Fichetti in sixth, Daniel Beards in seventh, uh, Alex Heron in eighth, Flynn, uh, Finn Weasley. Sorry, Weasley? Weasley. Oh, God, that's... Potter reference, sorry. Uh, Finn Wheatley in ninth, and then a lap down, Jack Maven uh, with Dan Burt, uh, unfortunately not being able to make this one. But nevertheless, ladies and gentlemen, that was the end of the Senior Rotax final, and then we have our final final of the finals. That being the Senior Blues.
One last one to go. So coming on to the track now then is the final final of the finals. Finally. Here's the Senior Blues final as a few more drivers start coming onto the grid. Seven of them so far. Not sure if a couple have uh, dropped out. Because I guess a couple of them might be waiting in the pits. But uh, we'll get ready for this one. So going through buttons and uh, slowly making our way to the top bend. And coming from the top, let's get ready for the Senior Blues final. Who's going to be out on top for this one as we go around the Billies and towards and through the S's. Down the back straight, it's the number one, followed by five, then 15. Around the horseshoe we go, the final 12 minutes to go. Around buttons. And then down the main straight. Let's get your order updated now as we come down the main straight here. So it's Anthony Cleo followed by Paul Alexander, then Tom Parker, then Steve Groves, then Michael Bell, Phil Shears, and then Alex Ken will round out the six, uh, sorry, the seven drivers, I can count. Uh, seven drivers out there on this circuit. As a family eats some ice cream. Mm. The white chocolate one is as well. That doesn't make you hungry at all. So as we go up towards the top bend, Anthony Cleo has left the others. Slightly in the dust. Paul Alexander leading the pack uh, with Tom Parker, Steve Rose and Michael Bell behind him. Also has uh, Phil Shears there too. The final final here with the uh, senior senior blues. Just over 10 minutes left. We're on the multicam view on the YouTube live stream. If you haven't already and you uh, haven't checked out the YouTube channel yet, feel free to check it out. After today's racing, the uh, full live stream will be available uh, a couple of minutes or so after the live stream has ended. And uh, you'll be able to watch back all the racing today alongside my commentary and all the camera angles that we have uh, with uh, today's stream. Also, if you do check it out, please leave a click onto that subscribe button and uh, also click the notification bell if you do want to be notified when we next go live in the future. Uh, just to check out all the bits over there. Don't forget to also follow... Uh, the Clay Pigeon Car Club on Facebook if you haven't done so already to get updates on stuff that goes on and uh, any new video releases that does get uh, pushed to their uh, Facebook page. Also, there is an Instagram page for Clay Pigeon Raceway. Uh, feel free to follow them on Instagram and also follow their Facebook page and also TikTok. Uh, because they're keeping up with the signs. But as we go back to the action, it is the number five of Paul Alexander, who is uh, currently out ahead of Tom Parker, Steve Groves, and Michael Bell. Uh, Anthony Cleal has uh, flown away a little bit. Three seconds is the gap time between himself and the rest of the pack. The uh, goes flying on by. Uh, 
Okay, it's spin down at Billy's. I'm not sure which driver that was. Uh, we'll just keep it on as it comes out. And that was the number 19 of Steve Groves. <clears throat> oh dear. He was uh, currently chilling in that fourth position slot. So Michael Bell in third position, contact warning given to Steve Groves um, as well out there. He's uh, headed on into the pits after uh, that little, little incident. We've got seven minutes to go. Oh, I think my voice is going. <coughs> I just had to cough there because <laughs> my voice is uh, feeling a little bit on the sore side. <laughs> uh, typical on the last final as well. I've still got another day to go. Oh no. But, uh, hopefully everybody has been enjoying the live stream today. Uh, different to have it on a Saturday. Um, So as we roll on through, another senior blue into the pits. Uh, that was Tom Parker. He was chilling in fourth as well. Seems like this fourth position hasn't really felt really good for these uh, senior blues in this final. Steve Gross was fourth. Had to uh, pop into the pits. And uh, Tom Parker was in fourth. So, uh, right. I think it's just a coincidence. <laughs> anyway, just over five minutes to go. As we near the end of the uh, today's action here at Clay Pigeon Raceway. Anthony Cleal is the leader by over six seconds, fastest lap time of a 36.04, uh, which is the fastest out of all the Blues, uh, senior Blues today. as the leader comes back over the line. I think he's going to be extending his lead once again. We'll see what happens and occurs in the next couple of laps as uh, we are down to five drivers on the track. And uh, not a lot of them are close together. Big shout out to Rob Dodds, uh, says uh, Joanna C on the YouTube channel.
So just over three minutes to go. Uh, Anthony Field leading by over eight seconds. So just even under the three minute mark, Anthony Clear leading by over eight seconds. Paul Alexander in second position with uh, Michael Bella second behind him. Uh, Phil Shears is eight seconds behind Michael Bell and then Alex Kemp uh, is still going out there. Seven seconds behind him. So some bigger gaps out there for the senior blues in this final. Unfortunately losing two of them. Uh, throughout this one. Six laps ago, losing Tom Parker uh, due to an issue, and uh, then losing Steve Groves uh, about 10 laps ago now. But uh, nobody been able to get into the 36.04s to uh, beat that fastest lap time on what has been an absolutely beautiful day here at Clay Pigeon Raceway. Hopefully this heat and uh, weather continues tomorrow. You never know, another day at Clay Pigeon could be absolutely anything. One minute to go now. Just, well, just over a minute to go. I bet not like. Uh, Anthony Cleal still leading the way. I think nobody's surprised about that one. Michael Bell starting to catch up with Paul Alexander. That gap is closing. And it is uh, closing rather quickly. 45 seconds left on the clock. And uh, that is 40 seconds plus a lap until the end of today's racing, the day one of the Wessex Challenge at Clay Pigeon Raceway for 2022. Well, so let's get a bit of a closer preview of uh, what these two are doing. We will uh, follow them around. Eight, uh, 17 seconds left. So uh, we're looking at uh, our last few laps here of today. Going down the back straight for those two that are creeping close together each lap. As uh, the leader of uh, Anthony Cleal slowly catching closer to that last lap board for the final time today. Here we go. Meanwhile, these two are just coming over the last lap board. Uh, Paul Alexander and Michael Bell are creeping closer. 0.23 between each other. Meanwhile, the other two that are out there, Phil Shears and Alex Kemp, slowly creeping forward. But ladies and gentlemen, we're reaching the end of today. And... Uh, here we go, the final checker flag of the day, and that's going to be going to Anthony Cleal. He takes the checker flag for the Senior Blue Finals, and it'll be the number five for Paul Alexander, who will take second, and Michael Bell for third position. And rounding out the day nicely, not forgetting Phil Shears and Alex Kemp, who are out there as well. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it for day one of the Wessex Challenge here at Clay Pigeon Raceway. Which means we still have another day to do tomorrow, round four of the Clay Pigeon Kart Club Championships. Points still from tomorrow will count towards this weekend. So there's a lot to go. We'll see you all very soon. And that very soon will be tomorrow. So, uh, see you later, everybody.